Who are you? Well, how do you answer that question? Who are you? Well, you give a name. That's not true. They put that name on you and they taught you to identify with it and to behave as it was expected to behave. But that's not who you are. You know very well. Go back in your memory. Go back into your infancy before they started telling you all this stuff. Who are you? The biggest games have a way of making everything seem a little bigger. The light shines a little brighter. The stakes feel a little higher. The inches are tough. The hits are harder. Big games are when we find out how big your heart is. How cool your nerves are. How good are you? And how bad do you want it? You put Black Bear on the field and you fight like that all night. If every single eye in the country is going to be on me, it's for these games of the century moments. The bigger the moment, the smaller you focus. Be a big time player. Make a big time play. Every set. It's 11 men. One on one. When I take all. LSU looks unstoppable. I would not want anybody else in the country that we have right here. I believe in this guy. Eight years ago, number one LSU met number two Alabama in what was billed as the game of the century. Those of us who love this sport live for nights like this. It was an indelible display of smash mouth football. It is a physical football game here. Puts it up, intercepted. Oh no, Eric Reed. LSU remains undefeated that is cold. the tigers prevail barely that was then and this is now a world in which both teams have joined the revolution where offense reigns go 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 to a tongo along clyde everty lair defonte smith justin jefferson jerry judy the script has changed but the stakes remain the same this is a game that everyone looks forward to. I've been waiting for this game since the this summer. This is one of the greatest stages of college football that there is. Man, this game is going to be something. Touchdown! Undefeated LSU. Tiger! What a play. Touchdown, Alabama. Undefeated Alabama. In the game of the year. And with that, the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us to a packed house. Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And the matchup of unbeaten. Second-ranked LSU against number three, Alabama. Not only just a game for supremacy of the SEC West, but so much more at stake. The inside track to Atlanta, the inside track to the college football playoff. As you look at the college football playoff rankings coming into the day, Ohio State en route to a lopsided win, but there's going to be a shakeup. The Golden Gophers of Minnesota have picked off Penn State. So you see LSU and Alabama there in the two and three spot. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nutzler. My partner, as always, is Gary Danielson. Last year, a lot of people don't remember this, G, but it was number one against number three. So we had the same kind of situation. This year, though, kind of a different feel, I think, and what's the difference? 
You know the difference, right? Joe Burrow. <laughs> Joe Burrow, yes. <laughs> and not just him, but the offense that he gets to use for this football team. Joe has come in here, changed the program, and Ogeron has changed the program. All those LSU players that have played in this losing streak goes, this is the offense they wish they had that can score. It's not one score, and we're out of it. They can stay in it, but Joe Burrow is the difference. His precision, his leadership, that gives this team, not just on offense, but on defense, hope that it's a game where you just don't have the other hold the other team to seven points. Right. Well, that's kind of the story of the season. Right. But the story of the last couple of weeks is the other quarterback for Alabama. It is, and the story doesn't change. We all knew that Tua going into this game was not going to be 100%. First time I've ever seen Tua come out not in full uniform. He tested it one more time just to go through, make sure the tape job is right. Comes out in warm-ups. He looks about the way you would think he'd look after surgery, what, 21 days ago. Now, the trick is, if he stays within the pitcher's mound, stays within re rhythm, he'll be okay. But you got to figure LSU will have something to say about that. It's not the only angle we're going to be watching today because LSU may be their best defensive player is an issue. Maybe the third best player on the field. And if you're going to lose a player, an ankle sprain for a defensive player, especially in the backfield, may be a bigger story than Tua's ankle. I got to look for Grant Delpit, where he lines up. Will he line up close to the line of scrimmage and stay out of man-to-man -man coverage? Might be the story of the game in this game. Where does Delpin, how much he does? Well, we got a lot of stars on both sides of the ball. You got a wild card for me or anything? Well, in 2011, I think 50 guys from this game played in the NFL. That's a lot of wild cards. I think this one is just the same. Well, I don't think we're going to have 9-6. Full deck, and it won't <laughs> be 9-6. You're right. All right. Well, if we're not already ready, Jason Aldean will get us ready to crank it up before we kick it off in Tuscaloosa. For the touchdown, LSU with another score. Jalen Waddle weaving his way. Did you see that acceleration? This is the Home Depot SEC on CBS. The best game from the best conference. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Progressive. New Orleans Tourism. Nissan and by Papa John. LSU and Alabama over the years so many great moments great coaches special memories and we'll make some more here today. It's more than a buzz at Bryant-Denny Stadium. It's electric. Here comes a tie. And from Baton Rouge, Ed Ogeron of the Tigers. Third member of our team, as always, Jamie Erdahl. Coach, we know you had to check with Tua Tungavailoa about his ankle. What did he tell you about how he feels, and does he get the start? He's fine. He'll start. It's an easy game to get up for, but what do you tell a team to keep their emotions in check for this one? Well, I, I think the big thing you want to do is focus on doing your job. You know, you want to keep your energy level up for 60 minutes, no matter what happens in the game. And, you know, you got to try to impose your will on the guy you play against every play in the game for 60 minutes. So. Both teams have done a great job of creating opportunities for themselves, so hopefully we'll be able to take advantage of it. Thanks, Coach. Thank well, Alabama's done a pretty good job of imposing their will at home. They've won 31 straight here at 48 of their last 49. And, of course, the all-important eight-game winning streak over the Tigers of LSU, who've been able to handle seemingly everybody else 
that they face except Alabama. On the other sideline, and Jamie has hustled over to Ed Ogeron. Coach, you have exuded a lot of confidence about this team this week. Why is this group different to make the streak go away from eight games? We have a great team. Uh, we have some great players on this football team. We know their opponent. We match them. This is going to be a great game. How does Joe Burrow have to play to make his Heisman moment here? You know, just make plays, uh, scramble in the pocket. There's going to be pressure. We need to hit him on some big throws. Coach, thank you. Go Tigers. When we talked to Coach Ogeron yesterday, Gary asked him, what have you told your team all week? He said, I've told them every day this week, we're the better team. Absolutely. I thought both coaches were on message. Nick always preaches, forget the scoreboard, do your job, win your individual battle. And you see Coach O, it's go Tigers, we play emotional football. 84th meeting that goes back to 1895. It is perfect football weather in Tuscaloosa. LSU won the toss and deferred, so Alabama will get the football first. And that'll mean number 13 to Atagabaloa to take the field. There's the series history. You win this, you're usually going to the conference championship. And you win this, you're probably going to the college football playoff. About 102,000 with us. Football fans around the world circled November 9th on their calendar. They wondered, might they both be undefeated? Would it be a top five matchup? They are. It is. It's on. From a yard deep, Henry Ruggs. Ruggs found a little seam, got across the 25. And he's out around the 28-yard line. Let's check our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it all starts with number 13. 20 days removed from a surgery on his ankle. To a Tagovailoa, and even having missed that last game, sensational numbers. Coming in, 27 touchdown passes, only two interceptions. He's a special player. Alabama starts out with six offensive linemen. They got an extra guy in there. Three tackles. Jerry Judy in motion to the top of your screen on first down from the 29. Play yes. action. Kind of a low all day to throw. And he's got it complete to Henry Ruggs. Out to midfield. If you're listening at home, anytime Brad Nessler says he's got all day to throw, you can expect something like this. Pick up a 20 to the 49. One play, one first down. Now Najee Harris. A little hesitation. The high step down the sideline. Two huge plays to open things for the Crimson Tide. The biggest improvement for this Alabama team has been their offensive line, and that has sprung Najee Harris. They're able to run the ball more efficiently since they've moved DeAndre Brown into that guard position and slid over Landon Dickerson, the transfer, into the center spot. 20 by air, 31 by ground, and already at the red zone. First and 10, Alabama at the LSU 20. Waddle in motion. And comes back the other way, and he'll get the toss from Tagovailoa trying to get to the edge, and he got there somehow. Knocked out at about the 11-yard line. I thought they had him bottled up, but he's just too fast. Nobody produces more missed angles on tackles than Jalen Waddle. Kerry Vincent, number five, comes up, misjudges Waddle's speed. He's got explosive start-stop speed. I mean, we talk about rugs, talk about Waddle, talk about Judy. Pick it. There's a guy all over the field that can run, but none much faster than Watt. Three wide outs up top on second down and a yard. Everybody looks to the sideline. And now, Najee Harris for the first down. And we got a couple extra. First and goal, Alabama. Oh! 
The rest of the Tide offense. Since Deontay Brown's in there at right guard, they've become a more physical running team. They didn't run that way this time. They came to the left to set up the first and goal. Billingsley, the tight end. In there. On a slot to the right from the eight yard line. There's a good hit, and no gain for Najee Harris that time, courtesy of Tyler's, Tyler Sheldon, uh, the LSU defense that looks like this. And Damone Clark in there as a replacement for Michael Divinity, who left the team for personal reasons this week. So he's got a bigger role. One of the mentions the Alabama coaches talked about, Steve Sarkeesian said, we have to block number 72, and you already saw him make a play. Second and goal at the eight. Devontae Smith in motion. They fake it to him. Tonga Valoa had it knocked down by Rashad Lawrence. And it'll be third and goal. Keep number 13 in the pocket. He's not going to want to get outside and do a lot of stuff. Lawrence, not the fastest of defensive ends, was able to keep to it from getting outside and throw the dump pass. So everything was running smoothly until they come up with a third and goal at the eight. All four wide receivers in the game. LSU shifting defensively on the front. Will Aranda bring pressure and try to get Tua out of pitcher's mound? And something wasn't right. Najee yep. Harris Took was the play concerned. Clock. Yeah, play clock went down to one. They had to take a timeout. Don't want to waste an opportunity at the eight-yard line. Timeout, Alabama. <laughs> President Trump and the First Lady in attendance today. Getting their sports fix on. World Series, UFC fight, Alabama, LSU. That's a pretty good couple of weeks. Chose a good game, didn't he? He sure did. A little heightened security at Bryant Denny Stadium. <laughs> we sure. had the largest crowd ever three hours before a kickoff <laughs> at a stadium in history, I think. To watch warm ups, right? Uh, exactly. Let's watch warm up ever. Well, Alabama warmed it up until LSU came up with another couple of good stops defensively, and it forces third and goal. Alabama in this situation likes to cross their inside receivers and then get a deep receiver running at the back of the end zone. Usually Ruggs goes to the back end zone. Ruggs is up on top with Judy in the slot. Waddle there with him. Empty backfield. Third down to go. Pressure coming. Tyler Valora has to scramble around. He's going to run on that bad ankle. Lost the football. And LSU's got it. Ray Thornton has two of just dropped the ball. Cannot simulate game action. You can test it all you want, but when you get in the game, now you instinctively make moves. And this time, can't blame that one on any ankle, can you? It just pops right out of his arm. And you know, it kind of rolled on him at the end, too. Yes. Right Absolutely. There. His right ankle got caught after he lost the ball. I thought he was trying to spin or something, but nothing. Just lost the football. The Tigers take over at the eight-yard line. Edward Gilaire, nice spin move and a good game. All the way out, about a yard shy of a first down on his opening run as we check the Chick-fil-A starting lineups for the LSU Tigers. And it starts with Joe Burrow right there. Great numbers, 30 touchdown passes on the year coming in. Edward Zilair to the right this time. Got to the corner, got the first down, and shoved down at a flag. Might be a personal foul, although there's a flag back at the 17 as well. Yeah, I don't know if it happened right at the end of the line was a Thaddeus Moss trying to get that outside reach block that he got called on, 81. There's fouls by each team during the play. Holding, number 81 of the offense. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Number seven of the defense. These fouls offset. Second down. We do good work. We each saw one. Yeah, we did. Yes, we Different saw Different flags. Exactly. <laughs> There's one of them. That's the second one. Yep, that was Diggs right on the other. And the other one was right on the end of the line of scrimmage. So we'll go right back to second down and one. A 
Edward Delaire in the middle this time, and he's got the first down. Let's check the rest of the Tiger offense for you. And Edward Delaire, it didn't matter if you talk to the defensive coaches for Alabama or the offensive coaches for LSU, they say he's the key today. So far, he's got a first down. He had a 136 in the game we did against Auburn. From the 19. Jamar Chase was in the backfield with Burrow. Burrow was looking toward him, and now he'll run. And as he does, usually gets good positive yardage. So interesting, the two quarterbacks come into this game advertised it's going to be a passing game. Both quarterbacks early in the game have a big run. Right. One is a turnover, and one sets up second and short for a first down. Empty backfield for Burrow on second and three. And that produces the matchup, the linebacker on the running back to the outside, and that helps Joe Burrow decide what coverages Alabama is in. Man to man with the linebacker out there with the running back. And the running back is Edward Z. Lair up on top. Burrow throws down the sideline. What a perfect, perfect shot to Jamar Chase. Yeah, yeah perfect. I don't know if there was a rub or not. I wonder if Alaire came in. Yes, Alaire came in and got the pick. Edwards Alaire on Patrick Sertan on that play. Just a little bit of a pick at the line of scrimmage, and that's what freed up the player. 22-yard gain out to the 49 and another LSU first down. Burrow steps up. Deep middle. Got his man again. It's Jefferson. Two-thirds of every yard that LSU throws for is between the half path hashes. And again, down the middle of this Alabama defense, when you watch it, when you can throw, have the bravery of throwing inside, have the system, you can do it. Play fake to Edward Zelaire. Burrow going for all of it. Caught. Touchdown, Jamar Chase. Thirty-three yard touchdown pass for the Tigers. If you attack Alabama, you must be willing to attack their man-on-man -man coverage. Watch this. Could have been a back shoulder throw, but a great adjustment by Chase. Trayvon Diggs, no chance on that play. That was pretty, wasn't it? Sure was. It was 92 yards worth of pretty in six plays. Joe's right on target. Three for three, 74 yards. Holy cow. Cade York for the point after. Kick is up and good. Following the fumble by Tua Tonga Valoa at the eight-yard line. 92 yards and some big chunks. This is what started it. Ray Thornton picks up the loose ball. Joe Burrow goes to work, and Jamar Chase, his 10th touchdown catch of the year, and the Tigers draw first blood. Tomorrow, the NFL on CBS features Patrick Mahomes' return as the Chiefs take on the Titans. Jim, Tony, and Tracy will have that one. Or an NFL North encounter between the Lions and the Bears. All starts with JB and the guys on the NFL today at noon Eastern, tomorrow on CBS. Watching Burrow throw on that first series, you can see why it's gone from tanking for Tua to bombing for Burrow. <laughs> Long time in between leads for LSU over Alabama, as you saw that graphic. They got the leads. Yeah, what a drive. Showed you everything on why LSU comes to this game believing they have the team to beat Alabama. And Ruggs will let this one go. Tua will bring him out to the 25. Here's a look back at the first drive. Yeah, it started out real smooth. Plenty of time to throw the ball. Step into it. Nice catch by Ruggs. Then trying to get out of the pocket. You can see Tua just not as nimble and then running. You know he didn't practice any of this, but he puts it in his non-throwing arm, his non-dominant arm, and coughs it up and looked like he even twisted his ankle yep. a bit. That's what we're going to have to watch because there's no doubt that there was something funny at the end of that run along with the fumble. 
Now Alabama's not used to being behind, especially by seven points. Jerry Judy sets up shot in the slot. Got it all up, bootleg look out. Had to get rid of it before he wanted to, but it's caught by Judy. Probably, and a flag. Yeah, probably a horse collar as well. Good pressure inside. Brandon Fajoko puts pressure on Personal two. Personal foul. Two makes a great Horse throw. foul tackle. Number three, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Yeah, Jerry makes a great grab here, doesn't he? And that's right on his shoe tops. And then Jacoby Stevens makes a course collar. Look at that route. There's no better route runner than Jerry Judy in college football. Took it right off his shoelaces. There's the penalty. And that's a tough matchup for LSU. Jacoby Stevens is a really good football player, kind of a safety linebacker type. He does not match up well for the speed receivers for Alabama. So first down at the LSU 45 for the tie. Judy coming around. Tagovailoa again had to throw before he wanted to, incomplete intended for Ruggs. Great job by Grant Delp at that time, not getting a penalty. He had a free run, and he did not take the big hit on Tua. Coming off the left side of the screen, watch him come up, and then pull off. Good play. The one ankle against the other ankle. Yes, it was. They both looked okay, but boy, <laughs> they've been starting to pressure so far. First throw was easy since then. Pressure. This time back on the ground is Najee Harris, weaving his way down to around the 41. We talk so much about the wide receivers for Alabama. I think everybody thinks, well, is there a better group? Look at the comparison <laughs> with LSU and Alabama's top three receivers. And if you add Waddle to the list for Alabama and Moss, the tight end for LSU, they still stay almost exactly the same. They get it done in a little different form, though, I think. Eerily similar. Alabama's receivers are big time yard after catch guys, more so than LSU. Again, time of the run now. Trying to buy himself some time, and he is really having to wear that ankle out there. That's Gary. right, and that and it's the game plan when we talked to Dave Aranda was we feel that every hit we give him in the first quarter will pay off in the fourth quarter. Make him run, make him move, make him do things he hasn't practiced in a while. They think it's going to pay off. We'll see. Even with Alabama practice and they go ones against ones, you don't have anybody hitting no, two. No, 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 you don't. <laughs> you and I got closer to two. That's, the, that's the true. The defense was allowed to get there. <laughs> Look at this, another mistake. And it's going to go down. The punter dropped. P. Ryan mishandled snap. The snap was perfect. Right there, right in the face mask. And wow. chance to get that one off. They've had issues with their punters this year. In this case, the punter's hands, not his foot, betrays him. Burrow going down and intercepted by Trayvon Diggs. There's a flag down, but Alabama gets it right back, depending on the penalty. I think Alabama had 12 men on the field. This will not hold up. Another mistake by Alabama. I think Alabama sent an extra player in right before it. Alabama has 11 players out there, but watch Rashawn Davis come running in. That's the 12th player. The ball is snapped quickly, and that's 12. Yeah. Legal substitution on the defense. 12 players in the field at the snap. Five-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. Holy cow. That's three major mistakes right. for Alabama in this football game. And we're not even halfway through the quarter. Two fumbles. They get an interception, and it goes away because of 12 men on the field. And it was a very big 12th man, Raquan Davis. There was some confusion. LSU was ready to go all the way, and Alabama was not. Joe Burrow snapped it quick and got away with it. First down and five, then, at the 35 of Alabama. 
Edward Zelayer puts his head down and got a couple. Just give you an example of the difference in the games. A year ago, Joe Burrow was the quarterback, too. But at the end of the first half, LSU had only 10 rushes for minus one yard. They're getting better running, and Joe Burrow has thrown only 68 last time. Boy, look at that. Uh, Terrell Lewis came flying in there like Superman, and uh, the flag down. Burrow has already thrown for more in this first quarter than he did in the whole first half. It's amazing. Here's the call. Offside, contact in the neutral zone. Number 24, the defense. The five-yard penalty results in a first down. Joe Burrow, a year ago, that's what he did. Sacked five times. He's already got a touchdown today, and he's got the Tigers back at the 27 of Alabama right now. That was his final step. Remember, the halftime score was 16-0 to Alabama, and he only threw for 68 yards in the first half. And it ended up being 29-0 at the end. And just outside the 27, a little flip to Justin Jefferson. Trying to find his blockers. Going to be run out at about the line of scrimmage, though. Justin Jefferson. Second and ten for the Tigers in an empty backfield. Edward Zelair, the running back down to the bottom of your screen. And the three wideouts, two wideouts, and a tight end to the top. This is the change in the offense. These guys out here helps declare what the defensive is doing on the play. That's the Joe Brady wrinkle in this offense. Jennings gets some pressure, and he got all of it. Sacks Burrow. Jennings coming off the right side, just gets around the edge too quickly, forces up and, in, and ends up making. And you know what? Irons out wrinkles, pass rush. Yeah. <laughs> those wrinkles aren't as good when those guys up front are coming at you. The fifth sack of the year for Jennings, and it puts LSU behind the sticks for the first time. Third and 17. Burrow, four-man rush, getting close again. He runs it, though, and Burrow... Trying to stretch it out, he'll get to the 22, but well short of a first down. Yes, but well in range for a field goal. If he'd have gotten sacked in the backfield, I don't know. They'd have been really stretching the field goal position, but Joe shows his athletic ability, makes the play. You don't have to be Michael Vick or Lamar Jackson. Just get us enough and get it in field goal range and could have been called for face max. Very right. close. Yep. But it sets up Cade York. To try a 40-yard field goal as long this year, 48. And to see his numbers, 11 of 13. York to try to get LSU a 10-point lead. Does. Still a big stop for that Alabama defense. It could have got out of hand. After the fumbled punt, snap, a field goal more for LSU. They're up 10-0. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 news network for coverage that's always focused on the game. Get nonstop highlights, fantasy advice, and picks. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Don't forget Gary will join the crew there after our game, which has LSU up 10. You go, when's the last time Alabama was trailing by oh, 10 points? I remember. There you go. <laughs> the and, last time they lost at home. And, and, and similarly, they were turnovers that jump-started that Ole Miss offense, 14. All areas. Let's see if Alabama can settle down after this kickoff. And you know how I settled down? I settled down going to the slant game, the RPO game, go back to what Tua does best. Avery Atkins to kick. And they'll start at the 25-yard line again. And there have been some miscues, some major ones for the tie today. Yeah, and the two of them really on force. By Tua, puts it into his non-dominant hand, loses it, and then you never think this is going to happen. A perfect snap to the punter, and then a substitution mistake, a quick snap, and on an interception to the outside, it ends up being an opportunity for LSU to kick a field goal. 
Haven't been behind by 10 this year. Rhythm throws. I think they got to go to the rhythm throws in the pocket. Quit trying to prove that Tua can get out of the pocket. Just do what he does best. They got Waddle in the backfield behind Tua. And now he'll flush out of there on first down. They're going to throw it right out in the flat to us. And we got about five. Just move the sticks four or five yards at a time. Get it one down the middle. Relax. Remember, Tua with the injury, let's not think too much about him, how much flexibility he has in his ankle. He really didn't do much for 20 days. Right. A little rusty. Watch practice was very controlled. This is full competition, and he hasn't had practice even in 20 days. At least full go practice. High snap, Ryan Robinson gets the handoff, and he's going nowhere. Drop for a loss. Apu Ika. Last year was the other ankle, remember? 27 days after ankle surgery, that's what he did against Oklahoma. No disrespect to anybody, but this LSU defense a little better than Oklahoma. <laughs> We were thinking the same thing. I always think I'm on the right track when you know the finish of my system. I'm right here. I got that one right. Third down and six. Empty backfield, so it's a throw coming. Hey, they, they've given him the look of bringing extra people. They do bring extras. And he's got a wheel and turn and throw it all balance and out to the sideline. Man, oh man, Dave Aranda is doing it. He brings in Marcel Brooks, another true freshman, hybrid, safety linebacker type, right up the middle, and there's no way Tua, whether his ankle was 100% or not, could have got away from that one. And he gets spun, and how many hits can he take? That's the question. That's an awful lot of hits in one quarter so far, that's for sure. When we talked to Dave Aranda, he said we have to test that ankle. This time P. Ryan handles the snap. The kick will chase Stingley back to the 20. Derek Stingley, he is really dangerous if you give him a little room. But they'll bring it down after about a nine-yard punt return. What a start for LSU. The tide wobbling here at the three-and-a-half-minute mark of the first quarter. Tigers back on offense when we come back. Just 20 days ago, that young man, Tua Tungavailoa, was in surgery to repair a high right ankle sprain. As we mentioned, the same surgery he underwent late last season on the left ankle. Here's the procedure. When you suffer a high ankle sprain, the ligaments connecting those two bones, the tibia and fibula, they get stretched or they are even torn. The tightrope procedure inserts these fiber wires into those bones to stabilize the ankle the way the ligaments cannot until they're healed. I spoke with two foot and ankle orthopedic surgeons who really marveled at Tua's recovery timeline since this injury used to be considered a three to six month recovery. Guys, he keeps taking these hits. Trainers are checking with him after every series. He keeps waving them off. Boy. Jamie did so much research on that ankle thing. We thought she could perform the surgery 100%. on us. Yes. Back out offense for the Tigers with a 10-point cushion at their own 28-yard line. How about this first down? And Alabama has six defensive backs on the field against LSU. <laughs> Doesn't sound right, does it? Edwards Elair. And that's a big story. If they could stop the run with six DBs, wow. Got about three. Alabama defensively. Terrell Lewis and Anthony Jennings have to apply pressure on Joe Burrow. Jennings does have one sack today. Lewis has one offside penalty. There are the bookends, 33 and 24. Second and seven. Thaddeus Moss, the tight end, is the extra receiver down to the bottom of your screen. Into the eyes of Joe Burrow. And into the eyes of the Alabama defense. Down he goes again. Anthony Jennings again. If you're going to throw at the defender's feet, you got to get him. Sadiq Charles, watch him throw and miss the block. Throws and whiffs. That's called a shoe duster. And Jennings is going to get dusting the quarterback because of the shoe duster block. Two sacks today, six for the year. And again, it puts a little pressure on LSU offensively. It was third and 17 after the last sack. Third and 16 this time. Burrow going to 
throw to Edwards Elair looking for blockers. And he'll be brought down from behind by Raquan Davis. Nice hustle. No, it was Barmore. I beg your pardon. You know, the two quarterbacks grab a lot of ink, and they deserve it. But there are a lot of NFL players on both of these defenses oh, out there. Tell you, if you want to see some man-to-man -man coverage, watch Stingley and Fulton, number one and number 24 for LSU. Diggs and Sertan for Alabama. And Rosenberg's punt goes back to the 23. Wow! I don't know how Waddle got away from that whiplash. And now he's coming the other way. Jalen Waddle across midfield. He's got a convoy. Waddle, he's gone. Touchdown. The top punt returner in the nation just showed you why. 77 yards. And LSU has allowed the third fewest returns in all of college football. Racy McGrath had a shot at him, but once number 17 gets the corner, it's all over. Jalen Waddell averaging 21 yards, a punt return, the best in the country. It just went up the average. <laughs> just for sure. Bolibus extra point is good. Don't have to talk about lengthy drives. Sometimes it just takes a special talent. Should have been a face mask as well. Jalen Waddell, 77 yards, almost coast to coast. Just like that in one play. Alabama right back in the thick of things on their home field. Back at Brian Denny Stadium that erupted a couple of minutes ago, courtesy of Jalen Waddell on a 77 yard punt return. Bullivus to kick. Clyde Edwards Elair from the six yard line. Little stutter step, spin move. Got out near the 25 before he stood up. Ness, a lot happened here. This punt was designed to go right. Look where the Alabama players are. They're to the right side of the field. But because Jalen Waddle gets spun, off the face mask, he instinctively goes the way he was spun. That creates the open space, and Adlin produces the touchdown. He was going the wrong way on a one way. He was. But he man. found the right way, didn't he? But it was wide open. Tigers from the 25. Their lead cut to three here late in the first quarter. Burrow, quick toss out to Moss, the tight end. Bounced out at about the 30-yard line. First punt return. Touchdown against LSU in a long time. Javier Arenas, who's a great punt returner. And I, I talked to him at practice on Thursday. I said, Javier, what do you remember about this series? He said, I played terrible <laughs> until I had the punt return. <laughs> Second down at four. Edward Taylor gets popped, spins away a little bit from Xavier McKinney, but he's still short of the first down. And if this Alabama defense is going to be able to control the run with six defensive backs on the field, they will be successful. Quick snap, Edward Taylor. Well, he got the first down. He paid the price. Markale Benton with the tackle. You could see the tempo. Fast football trying to catch this Alabama team off balance to just gain enough of an advantage to get the first down. That's where he had to get, and he did, and that was all. And that will be all for quarter number one. Boy, a lot of big plays already in 15 minutes, that's for sure. Ed Ogeron's team on the road with the lead, 10-7 at the end of one. We'll return to Tuscaloosa after this message. And a word from your local station. Reason 
to cheer if you're an LSU fan. The number two Tigers leading third rank tide of Alabama by three as we start the second quarter at Bryant Denny Stadium. LSU first down at its own 35. Extra rusher coming, Burrow pressured. Got away from it, got it out to Edwards Elair in the flat. And number 22, there he is, making a play again. And another first down. We welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Jamie's down on the field. You know, LSU's doing their LSU thing, Gary, but this doesn't look good for Alabama the way they've been playing so No, that's far. true. You know, I thought coming into the game, one of the advantages LSU had is they're more battle-tested, mm -hmm. playing against the big teams. The longer the game goes, it looks like Alabama's starting to get used to the pace that LSU's playing in this game. But, you know, Joe Burrow is just so darn good. And that delivery was perfect. He fakes the toss to Jefferson and goes right back to Justin Jefferson. And Jefferson, great move on McKinney. And a first down, and he's still going. Down to the 36-yard line. The Alabama defense is one of the top defenses in the country with yards after catch. They do not miss tackles in space. But look at this. This is up. This is better athletes than they've been facing. Face better athletes, you miss more tackles. First down at the Alabama 37. Play fake. Burrow steps up, and now he's going to run with it. And runs into one of his own guys, but still got it near the 30-yard line. I guess Edward Zeller made the tackle. <laughs> Eight straight to start the game, including a touchdown. Not so good for Tua. Four of eight for 49 yards so far. Edward Zeller broke one tackle. He won't get away from the second one, though. Markel Benton hit him first, and then Jennings cleans up. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, it was an impressive return for that touchdown, but Jalen Waddle went right to the medical tent immediately after, and he actually just jogged into the locker room. Not sure why, but he was jogging, so no limp or anything. I'll try to find out more. God, I think he's thinking about his neck. <laughs> the way it was twisted on that one play. Here's an opening. Paris Marshall is gone. Touchdown, LSU. He was wide open. Well, unbelievably open. You thought it took about a busted coverage. Not only was it busted once, it's busted twice. Two players wide open for an LSU watch here and here, both of them. Alabama completely busts. Moss is wide open. Marshall's been hit wide open. Holy cow. Marshall had time to put his left hand up and say, Joe, I'm right here. Throw it to me. I mean, you see bust once in a while, but two like that, embarrassing for this Alabama defense. Cade York for the point after. Blocked. Might have been McKinney. First positive thing, maybe, other than the punt return for Alabama to block the extra point. Kinney skips right through. You yeah. always have to force the inside block first if you're the wingman. He almost beat the snap he there. Did. So McKinney blocks the point but doesn't block a touchdown. Wide open Terrace Marshall, his eighth score of the year, 16 to 7, LSU. LSU with a 16 to 7 lead a couple minutes into the second quarter. Now the first quarterback against Alabama with two or more touchdown passes. And he's got two and 32 for the year. Does anybody look calmer than that guy? I was going to say, he's been almost perfect. Our aerial coverage is sponsored by State Farm. As you're looking at Bryant Denny Stadium, sun splash November 9th here in Alabama. And 102,000 with us, including the President of the United States. Alabama takes a field on offense. We'll see if they can get something going. Parker, you're a hard grader. Burrow's <laughs> 9 for 9. I said almost perfect. perfect. <laughs> Sorry, I meant perfect. <laughs> Boy, are you a hard grader. I'm sure Joe's got some flaws somewhere. <laughs> Woo! Glad I'm not your teacher, glad right? I did, I did, glad I didn't play for you. <laughs> First down of the 25. Play action. Kind of the sideline and the overshot of Devontae Smith. Now, there's two sides of this, you know, staying in the game for Tua. 
Yes, his ankle may get a little sore, but maybe he'll pick up the tempo of competing in this game. Because right now, he is not in sync at all in this football game. He took two complete weeks off, and then he went controlled practices. He does not have the feel of complete high-level competition so far. He's had the feel of Rashad Lawrence a couple times at his grill, including on that last pass. Second and ten. Ryan Robinson trying to get wide. He's not going to drop for a loss of four. Caleb on chasing. And Stevens over there to make the play. Well, this back eight for LSU is versatile and they're interchangeable. You don't know where Chason or Delpit or Stevens or Phillips or Quinn, Queen, excuse me, will line up on every play. Dave Aranda moves them all over the field. So far, they haven't missed Michael Divinity, who left the team this week. They've been picking up the pace for him in that spot. Third and 13. to step up with some pressure down the middle, completes it to Judy. Judy with a nice cut. First down, Alabama. Najee Harris is the guy that gave Tua time to throw the ball in the pocket. Look how he goes across the quarterback and allows Tua to step up and deliver. That's his game. If he can stay in the pocket and throw, he's going to produce yards. 20-yard pickup to the 22, and a flag flies, and a false start. On the tide. False start. Number six, offense. Five yard penalty. First down. It's been a messy start for yep. Alabama, but you know, as penalties go, this is one of the worst Alabama teams Nick Saban's had in penalties. They're ranked 110th in the country in penalties per game. There's some other SEC schools on that list. Of yeah, years. there are. <laughs> There's five of them that are ranked over 100. Three so far against Alabama. That last one backs him up to first down at 15. Back the low. He coming from behind. Had to get rid of it. Was hit as he got it to Najee Harris. And Harris back to about the 44. See, this is why Najee Harris is coming on strong. We showed you how he picks up the blitz to play before. Two is going to have to get rid of this ball just as he takes another hit. You know that they believe, LSU believes, that that will pay off later. But when Najee gets the ball, he's a tough tackle. 240 pounds, but he is nifty. Christian Fulton is the man down. We'll check on him when we come back. Zucker back with his Papa John's update. We already had one top four team go down today in the other meeting of eight and no schools. Penn State, Sean Clifford matched his season total with three interceptions, including this one in the end zone with about a minute to go and Penn State down by five. They stormed the field in Minneapolis. They're nine and oh for the first time since 1904. Back upstairs to you, Ness. Hi, right, Zuck. Thanks. Good to have you along with us today. 11-29 remaining in the half. You know, sometimes not just sprained ankles by quarterbacks, but Grant Delpit's coming off an ankle. He hasn't practiced much either. Talked about it in the open that LSU does not want him in one-on-one -on -one situations. Slay Bolden in the backfield with Tagadaloa. They're going to throw it. A quick one to Dante Smith. Going to bring up third down. So much today. You know, it's amazing. We've gone through this quarter and a half almost now, just over a quarter, and we still haven't called the name Derek Stingley except on a punt return, Fulton back in the game. But you'd think a true freshman corner would be picked on. So far, nothing his way. Well, they're finding out that picking on him is not worth it. He's got four interceptions on the year. Judy in motion, empty backfield on third and five. The time of the law. They're pressuring him again. Now he has to scramble around. He's going to try to run and slide. Oh, that was an ugly slide, too. Did he get the first down? And it's going to be short. It's where you start the slide, not where you end up. Remember, all week they've been telling Tua, get what you can, then go down. Don't take chances. So he slides and actually gets his right foot stuck in the defender. 
Yep, never hit his foot. Slide, but he's short. They're going to go for it, it looks like. Fourth and a yard. And it's Wildcat with Brian Robinson and Slay Bolton both in there. He'll run it, and he's... Was he getting there or not? Oh, boy, right at the end, I think he spun forward. Was his knee down? Well, this will be reviewable. It was close. They're going to measure. <laughs> Bolton took the direct snap. Fake, fake. Was his knee down before he crossed the line? We couldn't see wherever the spot is. It stays. He spins forward. I think he may have landed on an LSU defender. That would have given him the extra yard yes. because otherwise he'd have been stopped short. And it still may be, but we're bringing the chain gang out. To make sure it is a couple of chain length shy. LSU takes over on downs. And I think Coach Saban just said, are you not going to review the spot? And if I'm reading lips correctly. Remember a year ago, as we say, we go to review here, a year ago, Alabama ran the Wildcat in short yardage, and they were successful. The only difference is the guy running it was the number one draft pick, Josh Jacobs. <laughs> yeah. Doing pretty well for the Oakland Absolutely. Raiders. So the play indeed is under review. It's going to be really hard to move a ball two or three inches, it seems to me. It's going to be inconclusive. How can anybody tell whether the ball went three inches further or three inches back? I think they're going to have to go with the call on the field. This seems like the best look that we have. Gene Steratore, our rules official. Gene, what do you think? When the player's right elbow hits the ground is when I have him officially down. So it is going to be where that football is when that right elbow lands. I don't disagree with what Gary's saying about it's very difficult to move this, but I'm sure they're going to look at every angle they can to see where that football is when his right elbow makes contact with the ground. Yes, his right when the ball when his right elbow comes down. Thanks, Gene. Good catch right there. After the video review, the ruling him. on the field that the runner was stopped short of the line to gain stands. First down, LSU. So even though it out when his elbow Gene saw it when his elbow was down the ball was on the opposite side of his body had to stand so at the 948 mark circle that because a fourth down failed conversion gives it right back to this high powered LSU offense Josh Jacobs versus Slade Bolden remember that too Davis Price in the backfield with Joe Burrow this time just outside the 48 yard line. Can this Alabama defense find their assignments number one? Burrow, plenty of time, comes back across the field to his tight end Moss, who dropped the ball but covered it. Give credit to that LSU offensive line on this one. Ness called it again, you look at the end of it, get it, that is Moss, ball comes out, clearly it's out and free. Now, the give is to Davis Price, and he's a little bit short. You know what we haven't seen much of in this game? The RPOs. Right. Where have they been? Yes. Now that you mentioned Neither it. Neither team has done any of them. Davis Price stood up. He's not going to get there. Terrell Lewis was the first guy there. Raquan Davis helped out. Well, Nick Saban went for it on fourth and short. Didn't get it. This time, hurry up offense for LSU. Stuffed inside by Alabama. Will Ed Ogeron go for it? Answer is yes. Told his team all week, we got the better team. We're bringing our guns loaded. We're better at every position. Here's another fourth down this time for the Tigers. throws for the now, first down. Delay a game. They did not get it off in time. There's a flag on the field. Delay a game. Offense. 
by the penalty. Fourth down. Change it to a punt. When it goes to one, the back judge will look, look at the ball. If it's not stamped, he throws his flag. Good job. That was a delay. And instead of a first down, it'll be a punt for Von Rosenberg. And remember, that guy has the seven points for Alabama the last time he touched it. out of bounds around the 10 right at the 10 eight minutes three seconds remaining in the first half and two at Tonga Valoa and the Alabama offense getting gear we'll see Gary, Tua Tagovailoa has got to be saying, hey, it wasn't like this in practice. It was not, but give the credit to LSU's pass rush. They've not had to all-out blitz. Their athletes have been forcing Tua out of the pocket, coming from different angles. Dave Aranda, the high-paid defensive coordinator for this LSU defense, has forced plays that Tua does not want to do like that. You say Dave's earning his money so far? Yes, yeah, so far no. he is. Listen, <laughs> he pulls out a win here with a good defensive program, uh, game, holding two at a 79 yards passing in the first, second quarter. Pretty good job. From the 10. And and false start. Oh, boy. This. False start. Number 70. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. The first word that comes to mind for Alabama, mistakes. Yeah, and sloppy. Let's take a look and test your knowledge Aflac. with today's Athlac trivia question. Which Alabama and LSU quarterbacks had the highest finish in the Heisman voting? Of course, we've got two Heisman candidates here today. We know that. And we might have given you half the answer, but uh, we'll have the rest of the answer for you a little later on. Backed up to the five now. Here comes Jacoby Stevens with a blitz off the side and incomplete intended for Judy. Delpit with a hit. What a throw by Tua. He had Jacoby Stevens right in his face and he throws an RPO this time. Watch this pressure. Watch this throw. Holy cow and what a catch by Judy. A strike right between two LSU defenders. Jostles them. The was it incomplete? It would have been a catch by Judy. Been a catch. Sorry, but what a throw. Well, Judy heard Delpit coming a little bit. Yes, he did. Although it was in front of him, it was catchable. And when you're the Bolitnikov winner from last year, he caught a lot of those. Second and 15. Devontae Smith, only one catch today. Trots out to the top of your screen. Kind of a little come back the other way. Judy's got another catch, but only to the 10. And Kerry Vincent's all over him. Third down and a big one coming up deep in their own territory for the Crimson Tide. You know, I, I know that's not a highlight play. But Kerry Vincent coming up and tackling the short pass for Alabama. Teams have not been able to do that. That's what you have to do. Short passes have been touchdowns for Alabama. Vincent comes no yards after catch. Saw that shot of the crowd. Everybody's stunned in here. The biggest eruption was the applause for the president and the playing of Sweet Home Alabama. They haven't had anything to cheer about other than the punt return so far. Tied it over at his own goal line. Two up. Fires complete to Judy on the run. Judy across the 35. He's the best route runner. Reminds me actually of Amari Cooper, the way he runs his routes. Watch this, he comes in and then goes back out. Beautiful, sticks his foot in the ground. Fulton had no chance on that one. How would you like to cover this guy? No thanks. Tua had a good pocket. The offensive line did a good job of keeping him clean and he delivers. Tyler Shelvin, the nose tackle, is the guy down on one knee, and that will bring us a timeout here at seven minutes remaining in the half. Adam Zucker with a reminder that coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, we'll bring you the rest of the day in college football, including Florida moving to 8-2 and two and keeping their East hopes alive. 56-0 over Vandy. Kyle Trask, a career-high 363 yards and three touchdowns in the win as we head back upstairs to Ness and Gary. Thanks, Zuck. Tyler Shelvin headed to the tent on the sideline. 
after being shaken up on that last play. Jerry Judy caught that last ball. We talked to him yesterday. He said, explain you four guys. He said, well, Ruggs is a speedster. <laughs> Smitty catches everything. That's Devontae Smith. Waddle's quick twitch. And I'm the best route runner. I, I think he nailed it. I think he did, too. And you know what else? They're all going to need financial advisors someday, <laughs> three or four years from now. That's right. He said they call us the rideouts now. We catch and we just ride out, right out of everybody's vision, usually. You know, LSU's not in a sack, but they had pressure. To it. Deep on the sideline, Devontae Smith, who catches everything. Touchdown, Alabama. Sixty four yards to number six. Now the crowd's into it. Derek Stingley wasn't even looking at his receiver. He got caught flat footed. I don't know if someone on the sideline was giving him some instruction, but Devontae Smith was by him before he turned around and saw him on the play. What a mental mistake. Joseph Bullivus for the point after. And he missed it. Right in the long tradition of LSU Alabama football, right? Nick Saban said we always hold our breath when it's time to kick the football. Still just a three-point difference, though. Four plays, 90 yards, 64 of us. 64 to Devontae Smith for the score. And it's 16-13. Devontae Smith's 10th touchdown catch of the year has cut the deficit to a field goal. Bullivis, who missed the extra point with the kickoff. And a fair catch taken by Edwards Elair at the four yard line. So LSU will start at the 25 as we take you back to the touchdown. I think the LSU bench was changing up the defense. Watch Stingley and other LSU players look to the bench when the ball snapped and it's over. Devontae Smith, who we saw against Ole Miss, Stingley's pointing yes. the other way. He would just, he's saying, coaches, leave me alone. Right <laughs> there is what he's saying. Now the crowd into it. Play action, Burrow going deep, and he's got Jamar Chase all the way to the floor. Uh, does this feel different or what? <laughs> Brad, you started off the thing that's got a different feel. This is why. Plays all over the field. This time, Chase beats Diggs on the play, and it's delivered. Burrow still hasn't thrown an incompletion. He got away from the rush. Still hasn't thrown an incompletion. You don't have to be Lamar Jackson. You just have to be nifty in the pocket. And watch this niftiness in the pocket. Keep your eyes up and deliver. That's why a lot of people are saying he's going to be the first quarterback drafted. I'm going to say this. It's going to be one of these two guys. He's a yard away from a 3,000-yard season right now. Second and four. He's got his 3,000-yard season. He's got Jamar Chase again to the 20. How about this game? 16-13 game. We've got one quarterback coming off a sprained ankle who had surgery 20 days ago. And the quarterback for LSU is 13 for 13. At the 20. One of the best red zone offenses in the country in LSU. They're there again. Burrow, play action. Goes to the end zone, overshot Chase, and Chase is looking for a flag from Trayvon Diggs, or I should say the back judge, doesn't get it. Well, Trayvon Diggs is being very very physical on this play. He was beaten one earlier, but this time he does it again and just messes up the, oh, it got grabbed oh, yeah. in the back. That's what Chase was yelling about. He's got a complaint, doesn't yeah, he? He sure does. Yes, he does. There's the red zone offense I was talking about. First incompletion for Burrow today on that last snap. With an asterisk. Exactly. Burrow 
Out in the flat, Edward Zeller. Maybe a two-yard game. Shane Lee is holding on for dear life, the middle linebacker. And it'll bring up third down. Legal substitution penalty, I think. It's the question of whether Nick Saban's going to take it. Will he give him two downs? An eligible player downfield, number six of the offense. An outside receiver, the left side of the formation was covered up and went downfield during a forward pass. The penalty's declined. The result of the play, third down. I thought so. You don't want to give Burrow two chances on it. You covered up these two players. This player's covered up outside right there by the wide receiver. So it's third down and nine. Let's see if Nick Saban dials some pressure here right now. From the 19, empty backfield. Jennings and Lewis in their track stances. Doesn't look like it. Lewis pressuring Burrow. He got away from it. Not going to get away from Raquan Davis. You heard it from Nestler. Terrell Lewis got the pressure. Force. Watch him go. Oh, he got a great start off the line of scrimmage. No way Douglas could handle that play. He just won that one at the snap. And it made the field goal attempt much more difficult after Joe Burrow took that on the sideline. It just feels like field goals are wins in this game, doesn't it? The way they can score so fast, these offenses. Cade York hit from 40 earlier. This is from 45. Kick on the way, and it is good. Yeah, it feels like you, if you're a defense and you could hold them to a field goal, it feels like a win. Really does. That's what Alabama is thinking. And on the other side, LSU is saying, hey, we just went up by three more points. Coming up, Adam, Rick, and BJ will have first half analysis scores and highlights on the Geico Halftime Report. And they'll be right here with us down on the field. Right now it's 19-13 LSU. Number two leading number three by six. A 48-yard drive and seven plays. A big chunk of that was Jamar Chase from Joe Burrow. Henry Ruggs on the kick return. And Ruggs coming right at you. Hook his knee touchdown. Although LSU is going to make sure. Boy, that's a courageous kickoff return, isn't it, for a high-level wide receiver? He took it up in there. It looked like it got a few extra yards, but I thought his knee was down the first time. Yep, right he there, he just it. scraped it. Yep. All the speed he had, he was hitting that crack as fast as he could. We asked you earlier the Aflac trivia question, which was the highest finishes for Alabama and LSU as far as quarterbacks in the Heisman race. Well, one was looking at you. Tua Tagovailoa, second. A.J. McCarron also a second back in 13. And Burt Jones, a great one, back in the early 70s for the Tigers. we got two Heisman candidates here today, but one's not playing the other one so far. Yeah, but it feels like Tua's finding his game here. Brad Robinson. That's <laughs> right. Got to the 35 at the four-minute mark. And if you're Alabama, you can feel this clock and the fact that LSU gets the ball to start the second half. Before, you really didn't think much about LSU's offense, but now they don't want to give them the ball back with two minutes to go and then them getting the ball again to start the second half. From the 35, second down and three. Talking about a plenty of time. Lofts one and throws it to the sideline. What coverage that time by Christian Fulton, number one, on the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you know what to expect, Paul, look at that. One-on-one, -on -one, get him to the outside, play physical, stay in front of him. That is some great coverage. Two and knew it, and he just sailed it to the sideline. Really highly rated football player Christian Fulton is. And then the freshman sensation Stingley on the other side. Two yeah. pretty good corners, got like they always seem to have. Right? got four of them in this game. Devontae Smith joins the Alabama backfield on a throwback catch from Tommy Malone. A nice tackle by Kayvon 
Jason. Caleb on Jason. Well, Caleb on Jason did his job. He's going to drop out to the outside and read the play, come up athletically, make the tackle one on one against a wide receiver. That's a defensive end outside linebacker. What do you say? 250 some pounds yep. making that play. Wearing that special number 18 jersey that you just don't get unless you're something special. So here's what I'm talking about get a three and out there. LSU gets the ball back and then get the ball to start the second half. P. Ryan the punt. Derek Stingley back deep for LSU. LSU's got their whole defense out there playing it safe. Can't jump off sides, number one. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So delay a game. They'll back it up to punt again. Every family has a little drama. A lot of love and a few laughs. Spent a half an hour with the Coopers on a new Young Sheldon Thursday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Three minutes to go in the half. And P. Ryan standing around his own 15 to take this snap. That was interesting. It was just a short timeout, and LSU wasn't ready, and Ed Orgeron took a smart timeout. She will have it back at around the 38 yard line. Joe Burrow, what a day so far in the first half. Yeah, and not only the way he's moving this offense, but his defense is believing in it. Everybody's believing in it. He was on target. The only one really he missed in this whole game was a kind of a hold on the back of the receiver. He has been playing. You know what? When you're a, almost an 80% passer on the year and you're having a hot day, that means you're really <laughs> throwing good. First down at the 39. Burrow quarterback draw. Almost got face masked and he got all the way out to a first down. We have seen him do this now for two years. He is not afraid to stick his nose in there. He ain't afraid of anything, anybody, any team, any field. Full out competitor. You know, I just keep thinking, you know, there's some great athletes in there. I'm thinking about that 9-6 game and watching this. This great offense. Shockingly different. Shockingly different. From eight years ago. Play action. Burrow loads it. Now he'll run with it again. And Joe's got another first down and more. All the way to the 31 yard line. And you see the toughness and the fire in Joe Burrow. And the athletic skills. I mean, this isn't a, you know, a 5 one guy. This is a, you know, 4 7 four, eight guy. What a package he brings in this game. 19-yard pickup. Another first down, and he comes up fire, this time too high for Jamar Chase. What a battle out there. Chase on Diggs again. End of this play. No sliding on this one. Gets up and then goes hurry up. I saw him this summer at the Manning Passing Academy. I said, have you learned how to slide yet? He looked at me and didn't even smile and said, I don't slide. Yes. I don't do no stinking slides. <laughs> I just thinking, what did that 211 receivers, Reuben Randall, Jarvis Landy, and Odell Beckham think about this game right now? Yeah. They were the receivers in the 9-6 game. Burrow, down the middle. Strike again to Jefferson, first down at the 18. It's not just receivers. Give all the credit in the world to Joe Burrow, but it's the package. It's everything. Commitment to changing a pro-style offense. Everybody on the same page. It's just all working right now. A minute and a half to go in the half. Tigers on the drive again. Chase in the backfield with Burrow with Edward Zelaer, the tailback. Right out to the left. Burrow throws corner. What a catch by Moss. Was he in? That looked like his daddy. Holy cow. Well, it's a perfect throw. Matched up on Diggs to the outside, and that's Randy S. Did he have his foot down? 
And the rolling on the field in the previous play is a catch at the sideline for a first down. This play is now under video review. I think maybe his left foot was out of bounds when he caught it, but I'm not sure. We'll see. I thought Roquan Davis might have even... Oh, yes, it's out before he catches it. Yes. He actually lifts it back into yes, play. before he catches it. Great shot on this play. Out and then back in. <laughs> what a pylon cap <laughs> shot that is. Gene Steratore, what do you think? What we're looking at is if that left foot can get down and reestablish himself in bounds again, or one foot, even though he was out, if he reestablishes, it will be a catch. That's what they're looking at right now. Again, it's right in front of you. Was he pushed out, though? I thought, Gene, that if he goes out on his own, he could not do this. Does he pushed out on the play? So long as he comes back in and reestablishes, Gary, even though he would be free of foul, he would be okay. And, uh, well, that's a, that is actually a good question, Gary, because if he's not pushed out legally, right. excuse me, he would be illegally touching the football first to touch. Do you think so there's a push? So he is coming back inbounds. I don't not know because we don't have a foul on the play. Yeah. So even if it's contact, he's not fouled by being out. I don't think this so is going to stick. they will come back and go incomplete. Yes, I think so. That's a great point. Again, pylon cam. There's the toe down, the retouch. I tell you, that's pretty acrobatic no it matter was, what the outcome. no matter what. But a win for the Alabama defense. I'm not even so sure that I don't know if I, I've ever said this if LSU wanted to score that fast. <laughs> Still 111 to go. Exactly. <laughs> they want to slow down and score. I'm not, I can't even believe I'm saying that. That is I, don't, I, I have no idea what's going to happen here. i got to admit, I don't know if he's out on his own, back in on his own, but it's going to be close. I'm sit here and wait. John Bible is the replay official. John McDade, the referee on the field. And everybody just waiting along with us. It's worth it. There's Thaddeus with a big smile. Randy Moss's son, if we didn't make reference to the Hall of Fame wide receiver, whose son is a tight end with wide receiver-esque hands. <laughs> Steps out, catches it, is even established. Remember, it's called a catch on the field. I think he's got it. He's got it pinned perfectly between his hands as he landed. I think the only question for me now is what's the rule? <laughs> I mean, it's like, <laughs> I know he steps out. Gene? I don't know if he even got they that They just left have one. to come back with it. If it's illegal touching, which is him being out of bounds on his own, coming back in and being first to touch a forward pass, it's going to be an incompletion as well, a loss of down. Thank you. Uh, I think that's why they're writing right now. So in w one way or the other, uh, it's going to end up an incompletion by, by the, by the After way After video the review, this. the ruling on the field of the catch for a first down is confirmed. in reality TV. Yes, it is. College football. This replay stuff is tough. I'll tell you. Gene, safe to say, that's not the call you would have made. At this point, I would have to agree with you on that, Gary, but I am digging in this book as deeply as I can go right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, LSU's dug as far into Alabama territory as they can go. It's in about the one-foot line, first and goal. Edwards Elair, not that time. Might have lost a little bit. Second and goal at the one-minute mark. And now it's outside the one. Play fake, Burroughs throw, still no go. Jefferson stopped at the original line of scrimmage. And it's third and goal. So they've tried to run inside. They've tried to pick pass to the outside. What do you do next? I'm wondering if they got a quarterback run for Joe Burrow. In the shotgun, Burrow with Edward Zelair. 
Edward Dealer, airborne touchdown. Oh, child. If that doesn't remind you of Darren Sproles, I don't know what does. He when I said e -Lair, he was in midair. Touchdown, LSU. He's about 5'8", and he jumped six foot. Five. What a play. Good blocking up front. Third down, right back at this Alabama front. Touchdown. What a drive. Eight plays, 61 yards. Cade York for the point after. And LSU has doubled up on Alabama. 61-yard drive and eight plays. Edward Zelayer, the final for the touchdown. You couldn't do much better on a drive to end a quarter. Take it all the way down to 26 seconds. Get the touchdown from Edward Zelayer. You've doubled up Alabama 26-13, and you're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. Yes, and that's what's the significance of that three and out for Alabama. When I said this is a big first down, they need a first down to keep that ball away from LSU. There is plenty of football left in this game. This this feels, again, I've done, what, 13 of these things. Wow, how different does it feel? Kick bounces at the 20, picked up by Brian Robinson, who got it out to about the 30 before he's run out of bounds. Amazon Music brings you today's scholar athletes. Raiden Fajoko, by way of Honolulu through Texas Tech, major communication studies, and Alex Leatherwood for Alabama. Amazon Music showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to LSU and Alabama's general scholarship funds. Remember back, LSU won the opening toss. They deferred. One of the reasons these coaches love to defer is this situation right here. Getting the ball at the end of the half and then getting it to start. You know, it's almost like getting to serve twice right. in tennis. Uh -huh. Tonga Valora throws down the middle, intercepted. Patrick Queen coming the other way. LSU's got it right back and another chance to score before halftime. Queen, an inside linebacker, red to his eyes on this one, starts right here and it gets into the way of the throw. Watch him read the eyes, follows it, follows it, he's in on the square end. What a nice job of zone coverage by the inside linebacker. Tagovailoa only his third interception of the year. Tua never saw him. He was looking left. He was looking for the square in. Queen saw Tua's eyes and went right to the throw. There's a couple of LSU players down. Kerry Vincent and Rashard Lawrence both trying to block and get blocks for Patrick Queen after the interception. And both guys are still down. And the ball is going to be at around the 29-yard line, I think. The ruling on the field is an interception. Possession uh, maintained by the defense. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 69 of the passing team. This penalty will place the ball half the distance to the goal line with a first down. Wow. You could see the LSU players upset with Landon Dickerson. They thought it was a cheap shot or something. You could see the commotion after the play. Oh, yeah, shot right. There. Coming from the back end, that is a cheap shot. One that he could conceivably hurt his team. It's unbelievable, a free half the distance, 15-yard dumb penalty. Dumb and costly. Yes. And now there's 11 seconds left. LSU's got two timeouts. And they're right back in the hunt for another touchdown, not just a field goal. Well, I think you can get off two quick throws. Remember, you only need one second for the last play. Boy, that's about as cheap a shot as I've seen in a while. Not going to make that guy happy. I know that. Doesn't matter where he throws it, he's got timeouts. From the 13, Edward D. Lair trots back to join Burrow in the backfield. Looking for more points before halftime for the Tigers. Burrow sets up, fires to the end zone. Edward 
Lawrence Elair, touchdown. There is Foles. Tell him this guy's going to be a great NFL football player. He's a nightmare mismatch. Coming out of the backfield. Joe Burrow putting on a show. Edwards Elair putting on a show. Nick Saban doesn't like the show. First career receiving touchdown for Edwards Elair. There will be many more, either with the Tigers or, as Gary said, the next level. I mean, LSU has scored 10 points in the last three years. <laughs> They're going to have 33 here in a second if Cade York hits the extra point. The fans that have made the trip from Louisiana are in a frenzy right now. What's under review, we understand from the truck, is a possible targeting hit on Joe Burrow. Took a shot to the left shoulder from yeah, Barmore. Barmore. I thought he caught him on the shoulder. I sort of did too, but. I, I, I actually do not think that is targeting. Lowers his helmet. The result of play is touchdown. After video to review, there is no targeting. Yeah, I think good it's call. Good, no call. good call. Or lack of right. I mean, I, I actually think that's a, a young player who got called for targeting earlier this year that has learned and did it the right way. Two attack of the low and knows it's going to be a long haul back in the second half. He just seems rusty. To me. You know, more than his ankle is bothering him, he just feels out of sorts. York's extra point is good. It only took one play after the interception, the subsequent penalty that set it up at the 13-yard line, and a third touchdown strike from Joe Burrow to Clyde edwards Elair. 18 out of 20, 252 yards and three touchdowns for Joe Burrow. And the design of that play was beautiful. And remember that penalty on Dickerson is what set them up so close that they only needed five seconds to score again. LSU, I don't believe I'm saying this, LSU by 20. No, no. I lived all those games. <laughs> <laughs> Vern right now, I don't yes. know what's going on no, in his mind. No, he's losing his mind. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm ready for the second half. So am I. But I don't think Joe Burrow is going to take his foot off the glass. Do you? I don't think so either. Squip kick. It'll be fielded around the 22. And that will almost bring the first half to a close. Tennis in the tight end is the guy that returned it. Well, it will make you question everything you believe. That's what I'm doing all in this first half. The critically acclaimed series, Evil. All new Thursday at 10, 9 Central on CBS. It's been everything, though. Alabama's been sloppy. They've had penalties. They've turned the ball over. And it just feels like in this game, the advantage of the game is the battle test the team was more ready. Tagovailoa takes a need to end the half. And again, as we told you moments ago, LSU will receive the second half kickoff. And Joe Burrow's going, bring it, bring it, bring it. That's the kind of guy he is. <laughs> well, they're bringing it to Alabama right now at Bryant-Denny Stadium, that's for sure. Nick's with Jamie. Coach, does Tua look like himself to you? Well, I don't think our whole offense looked like themselves. I don't think you can blame it on Tua. I don't think it has anything to do with his physical ability. Uh, I, I think we've made a lot of mistakes. We put ourselves behind the eight ball uh, with penalties. We haven't been able to run the ball effectively. And, um, you know, he made a bad decision there at the end of the half. All right, Coach, thanks. All right, thank you. Boy, they're behind the eight ball and all the other balls in the rack right now, huh? Henry. What a performance by LSU. They're up 33-13. Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones will be along with the Geico Halftime Report after this work from your local station.
Oh, it's on. He's in a five. He lost the ball. Burrow going for all of it. Caught. Touchdown. Jamar Chase. Terrace Marshall is gone. Deep on the sideline. Devontae Smith who catches everything. Sets up. Fires to the end zone. Edwards Elair. Number two, LSU, leading number three, Alabama, by 20 points as we're set to start the third quarter. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, I never thought I'd ever say that. Almost perfect half for the offense of LSU, not so much for Alabama. All right, number one, LSU's got to finish at number one, okay? Number two, Alabama, even if they don't win, is playing to stay in the playoff discussion. Right. They've got to come back and make this a game or they'll be out. Well, they got a long ways to come back from, that's for sure. And LSU gets the ball to start the third quarter on the kick. And a fair catch taken by Edwards Elair, so they bring it out to the 25. We want to take you back to a controversial play right before the end of the half. The catch by Thaddeus Moss, the tight end, down around the one-yard line. It was huge. Gene, you want to try to explain what happened here? Yes, I will, guys. And I spoke with Steve Shaw at halftime. There was a bit of this information we did not get from John McDade when he made the original announcement prior to reviewing. And that is that the ruling on the field and the covering official ruled that the receiver was pushed out of bounds by contact with the defense. That is not a reviewable aspect of the play and it took away the illegal touching that we were alluding to because we didn't have that information prior to review. And that might be a face mask right there on a three-yard run by Burrow. He just takes his helmet out and gets back up. So Steve Shaw, the head of officials for the SEC, with Gene Steratore, our official in New York, and uh, pretty much tried to straighten that out for you. We just didn't have the information. They could have passed that along to us uh, well, a little better. A lot happened after that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Another touchdown. Yeah, two of them. Two of them, that's right. Opening series, third quarter for LSU. Edward Delay, a little jump stop in the hole and got almost her first down as we check in with Jamie. Oh, it was a perfect moment. One of the players for LSU came out of the locker room, looked at a coach and said, this is what adrenaline feels like. And that's exactly what Ed Ogeron said at coming out of the locker room. He told me this is where the line is drawn, but it's a 60 minute game. I asked him if aggressively one to 10. How are you calling this game? He said 10 plus and we're not taking our foot off the gas pedal. It's just what Gary was talking about before halftime. The way they're playing offense right now. Number nine and his offensive coordinator Steve Benzinger company still applying the gas here in the opening series of the third. Well, they know how dangerous the Alabama offense can be if they get on a roll. So they got to continue to score. Play action for Burrow. Steps around the rush. Now he'll get what he can and get out of bounds. You know, for trends right here, Ness, the world has changed. How about that? Oh, man. Completed his first 13. An off half for Tua Tagovailoa coming off the injury, a fumble, and an interception. 26 points in the last four games against Alabama that Gary did in 33 right now. Second down and five. Edward Zelaya, big opening. Inside the 40, still going. Tell me you wouldn't want this guy on your football team. I'm not going to tell you that. He is a lead back. He is a running back. He's picking up blitzes. He's a mismatch in the secondary. He's what every NFL team is looking for now. And not bad in college either. The Alvin Kamara type of thing. Yes, he is. And you mentioned Darren Sproles earlier. And because of his size, that's who he kind of reminds me of because yes. he's not the biggest dude, 5'8". He's thick, though. Yeah, he's, he's put matter. together. It doesn't matter how tall you are at running back. Sometimes it helps you. You can't find him. At the 36-yard line, immediately here in the opening moments of the third quarter, LSU threatening again. Burrow. Here comes Jennings. He's got two sacks already. Lewis joins him, knocks him out of bounds, and Burrow throws it out of bounds. Those are the two guys we highlighted on the defense for Alabama to have to bring the heat to number nine, and they did combining on that one. Which forces second down and ten. Alabama dialing up a little bit of heat. 
Got to Burrow. Intercepted by Lewis. Xavier McKinney knocked the ball out of his hand. Gotta get to the quarterback. Xavier McKinney hiding right here is the guy who actually comes and makes the hit. Blind side. Oh, no help from Charles. Left tackle Sadiq Charles does not get the block. No way. Joe Burrow doesn't read that as a hot because he has a tackle on that man. Charles does not get out there quick enough. It's actually, is it a fumble or interception? Whatever. They it's called Alabama. it an interception. It's but Alabama ball. And Joe Burrow had to make the tackle. So McKinney with the hit. Lewis, who we just said is an impact player with the interception. And Alabama on offense, the 42-yard line. Down the middle, and a misfire intended for Henry Ruggs. Well, you've got all that talent to the wide side of the field here. But the ball... Just looked like it was catchable, but Ruggs, I don't know if he lost it, was behind him, or what. But from that angle, I thought he was going to catch it all the way. All of a sudden, it's incomplete. So many games we've had of two attack of a lower. The ball seems to never touch the ground, and that's not the case today. 11 out of 20. Judy in motion behind him. It's Najee Harris following his blockers. And somehow bounced off of Patrick Queen. And he might have a first down. Well, I'll tell you how somehow he bounced off of Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen runs it down. He's their fastest linebacker. But he tries to go for a knockout hit and doesn't bring his arms. Tackle him. Don't hit him. And that's what got Najee, a big man, to base break that tackle. Third down and inches. Harris again, and now he's dropped. Caleb on chase on was there in the backfield in a moment. Yeah, I tell you, Nick Saban's got a decision here right now. The score 33-13. Does he go for it on fourth down? Does he give the ball back to LSU? Coming off the edge, Chase on comes right off the pulling tackle, makes the play in the backfield, and looks like lining up for a punt. LSU will keep their defense on the field. Stingley stands back at the 10, awaiting what we assume is going to be a P. Ryan punt. And it is. And it's going to make the end zone touchback. And we'll be back. Battle in the West going on here, but let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper SEC Conference standings in the East. Georgia on top. Florida, as Zook told you earlier, with a resounding win today to go to 5-2. and two. Georgia's got a date with Missouri coming up in a couple of hours or maybe an hour. I really feel that the offense is helping the mojo, the LSU offense helping the mojo of the LSU defense. A three and out at a critical part of the game. They believe. They sure do. Long way to go, but a 20-point lead to play with. This Alabama defense got a turn. Let's see if that sparks them now. First down at the 20. Burrow in the shotgun. Set the throw again. Joe goes over the middle to Edward Taylor with a spin. And another first down. One of the biggest fears Nick, fears Nick Saban had in this game was Clyde edwards Elair getting inside his linebackers. And that's exactly what happened that time he got inside of Terrell Lewis. He said, it's okay if we push him wide, but if he gets inside, he can gash us. Got five catches already. Had a career high in receiving yards last week, the last time we had him, on seven catches. Now he's got number six. And, and he the, takes number seven with him out of bounds. And here's the part of the game, okay? In the modern football in the SEC, it's not downhill rushing yards. It's combined. And so far in this game, Edwards Alaire is over 100 yards combined rushing and receiving. So he's got a new career high in receiving yards with those 59 on six catches. Including his first career touchdown. Here he is on the ground. A couple Sorry. yards that time, short gain before he's brought down by the Take a look at 
Joe Burrow time like great basketball player as well Ohio Mr. Football went to Ohio State backed up TJ Barrett and then he thought he had the job won in spring but he broke his thumb as the third string quarterback Dwayne Haskins takes over named the starter after the spring game Joe transfers to LSU in May of 18 and now he is a bona fide Heisman Trophy candidate yeah. I would say right now it's his to lose it's Jennings that's down. That would be a big loss for Alabama defensively. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Chick-fil-A. Amazon Echo. And by USAA. Now the jumpers made it in today from... Keith Walter, Steve Smith, Corey Christensen, Keith Walter of Tuscaloosa native, by the way. Our aerial coverage, not quite as noisy as the helicopter. Sponsored by State Farm. Our blimp. Over Bryant Denny Stadium. As nighttime settles in, the moon shines bright, and man, LSU has been shining since the opening kickoff today here in Tuscaloosa. Second down and seven at the 48. Burrow in trouble, got away from Lewis, still looking to throw, and incomplete intended for Terrace Marshall. That's a great play by Burrow to get away from that sack. Let's go back one play. Anthony Jennings gets hurt on a play. He engages with Charles on the bottom of the screen. It's his left knee. I don't know if he spat. was right there when he stuck his foot in the ground, and Charles put his weight on him. That's when I think he tweaked it. Alabama desperately needs a stop right here. Third and seven. Empty backfield. Interesting. Diggs is out there well, this time with Clyde Edwards Alaire. Who's up on the top of your screen. Extra heat coming on Burrow and it got to him, but he got away again. Throws complete. Are you kidding me? I know. Edwards Alaire, and he's close to a first down. That's right. Are you kidding me? I mean, this was a free run. Maiden has him. Spins off of him and then finds the smallest guy in the field. Talk about keeping your wits about you. Fourth and one. Timeout LSU. Got to think about this one a little bit. Yeah. There's, there's a difference between aggressive and reckless. And you know, it, you know, do you go for it here and give Alabama hope? You put them down there. So I wonder, did Coach O take a timeout there for a review, or is he going to get his timeout back? We're reviewing the spots. That's what's under review. You see Edward Zelayer there on the catch on the sideline and then spinning and trying to reach out and out of Trayvon Diggs. That's a grasp. tall. That's a tall reach for him. If he's six two, it's an right. easier reach. Exactly. Najee Harris gets that one. <laughs> he was laying on an Alabama player though when he reached out. It's going to be very close. If you watch this very carefully, he doesn't touch the ground. To me, it looks like he's on top of an Alabama defender. And then he reaches out close to that line. I think he might have a first down. I can't yeah. believe that. It looked like he was on top, or his legs were on top of Trayvon Diggs when he rolled over. Ben Davis was coming in there, too. And he's still on top yes, of both guys. But he doesn't get it to the line. And, of course, the marker is just short of the line, I believe. Wow, what an effort. Well, and, I, and again, I wonder if Ed Ogeron is going to get his timeout back here. Because it's clearly going to be a decision very close. The ruling on the field that the runner was stopped short of the line of the game stands. Fourth down. So... In this situation, just for the go through the rule here, I believe, is even though in review it appears he got closer than the mark, you cannot move it up. You can only give them a first down. So it goes back to where it was spotted. 
And it's still fourth down and one. He told Jamie he'd stay aggressive. This is aggressive. There's putting your foot on the gas, and then there's putting your foot in your mouth if you don't get it. Jefferson. Now they're trying to draw him off sides. Now Jefferson lines up. Burrow will he come under center. Still trying to draw him offside. And Alabama's not biting. There's a difference between aggressive and reckless, and I agree with this call. So it'll be a punting situation instead of going for it on fourth down. And Alabama will be getting it back. Jalen Waddell has been a big part of their offense today with his punt return touchdown. They'd love to keep it out of his hands. But let's see if Von Rosenberg can. Wow, they almost blocked the kick. Fair catch, Waddell. Late fair catch. And a mistake. Takes it at the four-yard line. You're not supposed to back up behind the ten. Made a big play earlier and not a wise play here. Usually it's Alabama fo forcing their opponent into bad plays like this. Today it's different. They're doing it to themselves. Adam Zucker back with his Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Ohio State's Justin Fields throwing for three touchdowns and ran for one all in the first half of that 73-14 win over Maryland. Coming up tonight, Jake Fromm looking to avoid the upset against Missouri, and Travis Etienne looks to lead Clemson back into the top four against NC State. But right now, it's Joe Burrow cementing his front runner status, guys. You got that, brother. 8-21 remaining. Joe he, Burrow's been yeah, unbelievable today. He has, but Johnny Manziel finished the game with a win. I think Joe Burrow has to finish it. This guy's not done yet either. But a bad spot to start at the five yard line. Najee Harris cuts it outside, got to the corner, got to the sideline, still going. Najee Harris, his biggest run of the day. At the beginning of the year, the Alabama coaches were critical of Najee not hitting the holes, trying to bounce outside too much. He's doing it now exactly the way they want. I think Al that level with that time, one of the two great tackles that Alabama has in this football game, got a key block on the play. Najee, 76 yards, 31 of it right there. Out to the 36. Play action, down to the lower. Here comes Caleb on chase that. He just got to rip it to the sideline and a flag down. Sure was. And Tua getting up gingerly. There's a flag by the Neil Farrell is the guy that's down. Might have hit his own guy uh, rushing the quarterback. Really on the field is that the quarterback was able to get outside the pocket and throw a pass that was beyond the line of scrimmage, so there was no intentional grounding. However, personal foul, legal hands to the face, number 70 of the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. I was wondering if he means number 90, Richard La Lawrence. Are they going to switch this? Yes, exactly. It was Leatherwood. Now he's half the distance to the goal line. First down. You can see it in the middle of your screen right there. He had the number right, the color of the jersey wrong. Mm -hmm. Good call. They cleaned it up at the end of it. We're, we're all looking on our boards right here, right? We're yeah. all looking like, well, I got, I got no, no 70. on LSU. <laughs> But there is on Alabama, and you saw the hands to the face on the onrushing Caleb on chase on who was putting the heat on yeah. Tua. You think that Dave Aranda's defense hasn't answered the bell since the touchdown over Derek Stingley. Since then, the Alabama offense, Dave Aranda has held them to a three and out, an interception. They kneel down before the end of the half, and then another three and out, and look where they are right now. First and 25. Alabama continues to make it more and more difficult on themselves. Tonga Baloa looks right, comes back to left on a screen to Najee Harris with blockers in front. Najee down the sideline, bumped out, but he might have the first down after that first and 25. He got about 24 of it, I think. 
For years and years and years, I thought that Alabama was one of the great screen teams in college football. You see Big Evan Neal out there getting one last block before Queen cleans up the play, but they made up a lot of yards there. Got 23 of the 25. I'm telling you, to it, you just do to get hot here. Doesn't it feel like it? I just keep waiting for a, yeah. a, a slant pattern that goes for about 60 yards. When's it going to happen? Najee Harris. Oh, wow. Look at, Look at that. That's a big man, too. And he's a great receiver. We've showed you already. He broke tackles when Grant Delpit tried to take, to take him. Gets inside. Follows Deontay Brown around the corner and makes another positive play. Najee gets into LSU territory. He'll get a breather as Brian Robinson comes in to the tie backfield. I know it's 33-13, but Alabama has to stick with being balanced here. Keep a little bit of run, throw the slants, be willing to make first downs when they need them. Tie of the low. The throw, maybe. There's a crossing run, but Devontae Smith dropped one. Yes, and Tua made a good throw, but he had to throw it off his back foot because he was getting pressure on the play. As we talked, Mac Jones warming up. He saw Tua start to limp around with his foot out there. He's got to be ready just in case. Played against Arkansas as the starter and threw three touchdown passes, but Tua Tagovailoa was out with the injury. And there you see the right ankle. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt he's feeling a little bit more than he did in the first half right now. And that was the game plan for LSU. They thought as the game wore on, he would get weaker with that ankle. He's all by his lonesome right now in the backfield. Back to throw. Steps up. Deep ball. Man there. Judy dropped it. Would have been a touchdown. And now Jerry Judy a little bit cramped up after stretching out all he could for that one. Well, it's man-to-man -man come. Kerry Vincent, number five, is beat. Judy usually runs right with these and grabs the baton. That's a perfect throw. And Judy drops it. And Kerry Vincent, the guy that was covering, is still down at the five-yard line. I don't know if there's a better deep thrower in college football than Tua when he's on and throwing those deep balls. Most of the time, it feels like he's passing a baton in a track meet. With Kerry Vincent down, we'll check out him and take a break. The PBR World Finals continue on CBS Sports Network as the best riders in the world hold on for the sport's biggest payday. Don't miss Unleash the Beast World Finals this weekend on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Vincent went to the locker room. That could have been uh, one of the plays of the game that Jerry Judy yes. held on. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's subs. He so, doesn't drop many of those. That's for sure. Now, one corner goes out of the game. Alabama counters by bringing in all four of their wide receivers. You go right back to where Christian Fulton, uh, uh, rather, uh, Kerry Vincent should be playing? That's where he would be playing, right there. That's Cordell Flott. Third down at 10. Time of the lower. Looks left, looks right, goes middle, got his man in stride at the 30, and it's Henry Ruggs. He did. He's limping more, but he's starting to get hot. He looked left, he looked right, and he finally came to the middle of the field. Watch, he wants to go to the left side. Stingley's got too good a coverage. He ends up coming all the way back to the square in to Ruggs. 22-yard pickup to Ruggs at the six-minute mark. Alabama keeps its drive alive. Time to the lower, steps up. Down the middle of the overshot, uh, open Jalen Waddle. He's in the slot. He's matched up again. inside. He just sailed one. He did. You know, a lot of people have said, Gary, because of the ankle that he has, it's not his plant foot, but he's a left-handed quarterback, and when he follows through, he's put a lot of torque on that leg, isn't he? It? Does. Especially when he's moving. When he's able to set there, it doesn't seem to be a bother, but that one, he was moving and didn't get over the top on it. Najee Harris pushes his blocker to get him out of the way and got to the 20. Big man can move, can he? He's bouncing and running. When we talked to Dave Aranda, he said, you know, when we watch the tape, Najee is running like the guy we recruited. Yeah. <laughs> Five-star player, we wanted him, and now he looks like the guy everybody wanted. 
Alabama in the red zone, trailing by 20 with a first down just outside the 19. I uh, beg your pardon, third down. Got to think four down territory yeah. here if you're calling plays for Alabama. Najee Harris again looking for a place to hide. Cuts back in the middle. He's got it all on him. To the 15. Give that one to a smart runner, a patient runner, and a skilled runner. He's kind of a two-in-one back. He's a load, but he's shifty at the same time. Exactly. Got a man down for LSU that's drawing booze right now from the crowd here. Glenn Logan, a 300-pound junior defensive end is on well, a knee. There's a very high, high bar in our games for guys if they're taking dives. Right? I mean, we've seen a lot of them. We can judge them. <laughs> yep. We had a pretty bad one in the Notre Dame-Georgia <laughs> game. We did. We had, <laughs> we've had a few bad ones. Let's see if we see this one. Oh, that's an ankle right yeah, there. Yeah, kind of twixted his ankle. I think that's a little bit more than being tired this time. Yep. So Logan goes out. Najee Harris on this drive has been big. As both a runner and a receiver. Alabama's got it at the LSU 15 with five to go in the third quarter. Devontae Smith in motion. Kind of a lower. Going to go to the corner in the end zone. It's Najee Harris. Touchdown. See a lot of back shoulder throws to running backs. But no, 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 Najee Harris. It's motion this way. Najee Harris back that way. Queen has him. Number eight. Perfect coverage. Better reaction to the throw. That's well defended, and that big man is showing his skill. The touchdown, the tide so desperately needed. You know, all week I've been saying the running backs are a real big weapon in this game, and both have been coming through in this football game. Bullibus for the point after. He missed one earlier. Not this time. The Najee Harris drive has made the crowd come alive. 95 yards and 10 plays. Tonga Maloa to Najee Harris in the corner. 33-20. Alabama's 95-yard drive has cut it to a two-score game. There's still a lot of football left. Najee Harris sensational on most of that 95 yards. Edward Zeller fields the kick with a fair catch. And they'll bring it out to the 25. And now we're going to do Project Smarter presented by the Home Depot. Gary well, Brad just told you about a sensational drive by Najee Harris. Prior to that, the other running back was showing sensation with his ability to cut, work off tackles, get the short yardage touchdown, and come out of the backfield on a beautifully designed play right before the end of the half. These two running backs look so different in stature, but producing big time. The other LSU tailback, Davis Price on the carry. Just remember back in 2015, I had that picture of Leonard Fournette coming into this game, a Heisman contender, and he got nothing. And how frustrated he was in this game. Second and eight. Moss the tight end. The fourth receiver. Out wide to the right. Joe Burrow trying to be heard right now. Calmly throws it across the middle on the fly to Terrace Marshall. There's those passes. 
Alabama knows it. At LSU throws three out of four of their passes, what they call the 10 to two area on the clock. From 10 o'clock to two o'clock, that's where they like to attack in between the numbers on this field. He threw that one at about 1.30. <laughs> Burrow looking for more. That is a noon ball, and that is overshot. Intended for Justin Jefferson. Haven't been any, many miscues today from Joe Burrow's right arm. I just have the feeling, though, that LSU is going to have to score again. You, they cannot be shut out in the second half and expect to beat Alabama. Second and ten. Can Lewis and Jennings get home to Burrow? 24 and 33. They're both standing up right now, but they're both going to be coming. Oh, one drops. Burrow throws it out in the flat to Davis Price. Open field tackles a good one by Trayvon Diggs. And it's third down. One of those exotic looks from this Alabama defense. Looks like four are coming. They bring an extra safety, and they drop one of the linebackers. Big third down. Both ways. Burrow. Hit as he throws. Lofted it too high for Jamar Chase incomplete. Christian Barmore got a little bit of heat. On Absolutely. Burrow. Big number 58 put the pressure in. Burrow had to throw it just a little bit before he wanted a whiff up front. And that allowed the pressure and Burrow to the miss. And wise of Barmore to get the hit on the quarterback, but not drill him. Kind of backed off yep. once he hit it. That's so no those penalty. rules. Over a couple of years, they start to take effect. That's the safety that the officials of college football are trying to institute in the game. That's a one hopper that Ben Rosenberg took off the turf to get the kick away. Waddle with the fair catch does so in traffic around the 21 yard line. Next Saturday, it's an FCC on CBS doubleheader. Starting at noon Eastern, 10th ranked Florida makes a visit to Missouri, followed by a huge matchup. Number six, Georgia, number 11, Auburn. The FCC on CBS. Hope you join us from the Plains next week. Jamie Erdahl. Well, for the first time this game, an extended conversation to a had with some of the medical staff on this team for the remainder of that defensive series as the rest of the bench got fired up. He kept his helmet on in the offensive meeting room with his eyes down. It was an interesting body language from him. Oh, he, he's limping more now than he has in any part of the game, but he's also hitting some passes. The knee or the ankle's getting colder, the arm's getting hotter, and hits. This guy's on fire. Najee Harris. Number 22 trying to take the team on his shoulders right now. And he is. Watch Deontay Brown come out, get a great block, a good positioning block right there. Jared Willis had nobody to block on the play. Deontay Brown on the reach block gets to the corner. Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator earlier this year, told us at one point Najee was thinking too much. He had lost his stinger. Yes. Well, he's stinging right now. First down. At the 36. Takabaloa looks out in the flat, comes across to Najee who dropped that one and is probably lucky he did. You know, just because of the feel, you just kind of remember things. In that national title game, Alabama trailed 20 to 7 in the third quarter to Georgia, came back to win that game. So I feel that there's no way LSU gets out of this game getting shut out in the second half. Alabama, last three drives, have pitched shutouts. And of course, number 13 is a guy that in the second half won that game for them. And of course, in that SEC title game, Jalen Hurts brought the team back. Remember that? Exactly. Jeez. Play action. Down to Baloa, down the middle. Judy looking for a flag. You got one. Got one. What a battle. Fulton against Judy. Oh, boy, I don't know. He's an eligible receiver. This is a 10-yard penalty with an automatic first down. A little hand fighting there. Alabama. Judy's warming up those gloves. Yes, he's got he one, a drop there, and he says, not, not again, not again. Not dropping another one. The Bolitnikoff <laughs> Award winner from a year ago. I asked him, where's that Bolitnikoff Award? He says, Mom's got it. I said, where? In the living room. Alabama <laughs> brings out another tackle on the field. This is when they like to run their play action passes.
First down at the 46. Tagovailoa loads, goes deep, far sideline. Devontae Smith got it. Yep, they bring in an extra lineman and they go deep. You're in good phase, but Deontay Smith is seeing the ball, and Stingley is not until the last second. Smith goes up and grabs it. Hey, remember what we said that Judy told us? Smitty catches everything. He dropped one today, but he didn't drop that one. 32-yard pickup. Two is finding his game here. His ankle may be more sore, but he's finding his game. Under two minutes in the third quarter. Alabama has more than doubled LSU in total offense in the second half. Matthew Harris got to the next level. Down to the 12. Oh, Landon Dickerson that time, the center. He had one bad play early, but watch him on this one. The big guy in the middle. Boom, turns it and stays with it. That's what the crease is made. Second and one, under center to a top of the low. Gets it off to Harris, who loses a couple. Big third down, but it's probably two down territory anyway for Nick Saban and the tight offense. Third down passing today for Tua. Three first downs of the four completions. Will they throw it here or give it to Najee Harris? We're about to find well, out. They've established both that. No way LSU knows what they're going to do. you got to guess past them. Unless you're going to blitz. They do. It's Najee Harris. Wow. And, wow, they're pushing the pile, but nope, they stopped them short. It's fourth down. Well, Nick Saban's going to have the fourth quarter decision to make. Fourth down and uh, about the length of the football. You don't score in this game, the other guy catches up. And if you ever in your life thought about doing something now instead of watching the fourth quarter, reconsider. Yes. 33-20 into three. We'll return to Tuscaloosa right after this message and a word from your local station. We start the fourth quarter in Tuscaloosa with a fourth down for the Crimson Tide. And remember what LSU has been doing in this situation, coming off the edge. Fourth Aranda, and one. Aranda has been blitzing off the edge. And eye backfield for the first time today. But Najee Harris, the tail. He'll get the call. He'll get the first down. He might get the touchdown. He's down to the one. I mean, you talk about confidence. They ran right up the middle. Right behind 69. Oh, what a block by Leatherwood, number 70. And, and KO the, KO the linebacker back. in there as the lead yeah. back. Time LSU. Out. Time out, LSU. They don't have the right group out there. I don't know if they, yeah, they got a call. Yeah. Ed Orgeron ran all the way down to the five. He hasn't ran that far. He hasn't run that far in years. <laughs> or that fast. Yes. Wow, that's a fired up group. They're asking for more noise. Normally when you're on offense, you say quiet down. They're getting the crowd into well, it. We heard the ticket was an expensive ticket. You know what I'm saying? It's worth it. It's worth it. It is worth it. They have had fun here in this second half. The defense stood up first. And then you know what else stood up? Najee Harris. Right. And then with the running game of Najee Harris, Tua seemed to find the confidence to be able to throw that ball. Remember, he's produced and he's had one drop touchdown in the second half as well. First and goal. Career high for Najee Harris. He might add number 175 total yardage right here. Nope, they fake it to him. 
Tua tosses intended for the tight end incomplete. Takes a lot of discipline on those play action passes near the goal line like that. Everybody does their job. Got pressure in the quarterback. Good job inside by Jacob Phillips. Number six stays with the tight end. Delpit on the other play. Good discipline. Tua sort of had double clutch a little bit. Yes. Almost dropped the snap. They don't do it that often, do they? No. Second to goal. Number 22 is getting the ball here, isn't he? I would think. I'm surprised he didn't get on the last one. They've got every tight end they've got on the roster, and they're to help block, including tennis around the motion. Second and goal, Najee Harris. Touchdown, Alabama. Tennis in the, the tight end, but foul number 10, and you're in the end zone. Extra point coming up. Mobile game recap from Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Started sloppy for Alabama, making mistakes, turnovers. This fumble by two attack of a lower led to LSU's first score, 92 yard march after that fumble recovery. Joe Burrow doing what Joe Burrow does 334 total yards, three more touchdowns. And he's looked all of a Heisman Trophy candidate for sure. Big lead for LSU, and it looked like it was more trouble for two, only his third interception of the season. Gave it right back to LSU. But two has had his moments. Najee Harris in the corner of the end zone. Moments ago, Najee Harris by ground. And lo and behold, it's a one-score game. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, Gene Steratore. The lights of Tuscaloosa. What a finish we're in store for. 14-33 remaining. Jatre Kirkland and Clyde edwards Elo. Late Bulletin's kick. Edwards Elair take the fair catch at the four, and it brings it out to the 25-yard line for the LSU offense. Brad, Mern and I were here for 2012. AM had a 20-point lead. Alabama roared back to make it a three-point game. But Manzel finished them off, ended up with the Heisman. Joe Burrow has to produce some offense. If he finishes it off, it might be his year for the Heisman. From the 25, first and 10 Tigers. Play action, bootleg. Short throw to the tight end, Moss got it across the 30 to the 32. This is where LSU's game experience this year, the Texas game, most specifically is gonna pay off. But the Alabama team's been in a bunch of big games. These players have played in SEC championships and the playoffs. Both teams are going to rely on their experience here in the fourth quarter. Second and three, Edwards Elair busts into the secondary. First down, LSU. <laughs> so the two quarterbacks come in here. The six receivers come in here. And who are the stars? The two number 22s. <laughs> Not like I didn't warn you. First down at the 44. Burrow. Burrow 
Phillies completes it somehow in there around the 50 to Jamar Chase. That was in some traffic. Well, watch the Clydester here. You got to catch the ball, run with the ball, and block for your quarterback. Shaheen Carter's coming in free. He puts him upside down. Ball right at the midfield strike. Two minutes into the fourth, second down and four. Burrow, calm throw to Edward Z. Larry. The spin's not going to work this time. Xavier McKinney stays home to make the tackle. The most important part of modern day football is tackling in space. And McKinney got that one. You can read the lips. That fan just said, come on, Joe. Third down and three. Throws on a crossing route to Jefferson for the first down. Well, they go with that stack look. That's what Joe Brady bought from New Orleans. He goes out, stalls for a second, and then follows the receiver right behind him. He just gets in there and makes the play. Burrow looking for more. Going deep. Man is there and incomplete, and he looks for a face mask. Jamar Chase doesn't get the call. Trayvon Diggs was covering. This matchup's been there all day. Trayvon on the outside, matched up. It's got to be a perfect throw. It was not. Empty backfield. Second and ten. At the 36 of Alabama. Jennings is coming from different angles. He walks over, walks the other way. Don't know where he's coming from. Burrow over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Jamar Chase. We showed you that time Jennings walked back and forth, and then it was a stunt. Enough time for the throw. Should have been caught. One of the few drop balls that LSU has dropped all season. The pressure is building in this game. Third and ten. The noise in here is deafening. Gets it on Burrow on this play. Gets rid of it just in time. And up the sideline. Burrow saw it coming. Knew he was going to take a hit. And he gets the first down conversion. And then this guy on the other end caught the back end of the catch. football. First down at the 25. Edward Zeller, nine catches by far a career high. 79 He's yards. Quarterbacks, running backs, what a passionate football game we have here. Now it's Edward Zeller on the ground. You know what that conversion also did? Obviously keeps the touchdown alive. Keeps the clock a, rolling. And with a six-point game, makes the field goal an important nine-point game. Field goal range. Second and four. Edward Zeller, a little delay. McKinney wraps it up with the line of scrimmage. This Nick Saban defense is moving up closer and closer, attacking more and more. Coming off one side was Jared Maiden, right into McKinney for the tackle. Deculus, the right tackle, is the man down for LSU. We'll take a break. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Verizon. New York Life, Jersey Mike's, and by 
GMC. Want more stats? Hey Siri, who leads college football in passing touchdowns? Well, I know who is number two coming in in touchdown passes. Joe Burrow has added three more today. And a third down and five coming up the 11th play of the drive, but the two number 22s, wow. Something special on both sides. Empty backfield for Joe Burrow, third and five. Nick loves to play combo. Do you want to get him out of field goal range with a blitz? I think they're going to blitz here, don't they? No. Here comes Lewis, and Burrow got away. Joe Burrow to the five. Called quarterback draw. What a call on the play. Give that to the two play callers, Steve Emsinger and Joe Brader. Quarterback draw on the play. They're in field goal range. We talked about they didn't want to sack. And now they're thinking touchdown. Edward Zila with a spin, and he'll have one. Touchdown, LSU. I think there's too many men on the field as well for Alabama, though. They'll clad it, and that'll be a touchdown. Alabama tried a late sub. Sub the two was not able to get off the field in time. The penalties declined. Result of the play, touchdown. Well, cool Joe Burrow and Edward Dallaire maneuvered this team down the field, but he had to make somebody miss, and he did. Xavier McKinney is the man that Edward Zelaire spun out of the grasp. Of course, LSU goes for two here now to try to make it a 14-point game. Some guys just don't feel it. Joe Burrow doesn't feel it. The crowd goes crazy. The lights go crazy. Alabama's going crazy. He just calmly leads them down the field. Edwards Elair is over talking with one of the coaches. Yeah. And, 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 and we teed it up by saying, could he do a Manziel drive? I think that was a Manziel drive. Where they want to place the ball for the two-point conversion, they're going to place it at the left hash mark. And that was what the situation was. What? spot they wanted for the two-point conversion so left hash two-point attempt for the Tigers now they shift gears Jefferson joins Burrow in the backfield the tight end Moss comes over to the right Edwards Elair to the left Burrow to the goal line incomplete intended for Edward Zelaire and covering was Jared Maiden. He did. He undercut it beautifully that time. There was only a very small window to get it in, and he did not. What an answer, though, for the LSU Tigers. A 12-play drive and 75 yards covered. Joe Burrow got him to the five. Edward Zelaire got him in the end zone. 39-27 Tigers. He's starting over with a little help from his friends. Meet the Unicorn, starring Walter Goggins. All new Thursday at 8.30, 7.30 Central on CBS. As Gary said, the light's going crazy, the fan's going crazy, and Joe Cool says, I got this. Yep. If you're a competitor, you don't let all this stuff bother you. You just concentrate on your job. There's Heck, that's why he came done. here. He wanted to play in the SEC. He wanted to do this. By the way, his 342 is his seventh 300-yard-plus game of this season. Avery Atkins to kick. And Alabama will take it at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the GMC Game Changer. Well, we had a nice package of Edwards Alaire. Why not do it for the other running back? They both caught the ball. This back shoulder throw and catch. The big man shows his athletic ability. And then watch him get up in this play right here. Chris Owens, the former center, is in there as an extra tight end. He gets a big block and then into the touchdown. Now, down 12 points. Ten minutes to go as Najee has put 175 
Still plenty of time. You don't want to go away from Najee Harris. That's when the offense started working. Doesn't mean you're going to run every play, but you don't eliminate the run game. Ten minutes is an eternity for these two offenses. Play action to Najee Harris. To the top of the law. Running out of time. Down he goes. Rashad Lawrence is the yeah. first guy to get there. Yeah, but, but great coverage. It was actually good protection. The mental clock this time for Tua should have gone off. Give us, look at that protection. Nowhere to go with the ball. You got to get rid of the ball. Save us here, quarterback. Your veteran quarterback, we need second and 10, not second and 19. Rugs and Smith and Judy all to the right side. And two is coming across the middle of the other way. It's dropped by Harris. Patrick Queen was covering, and Najee Harris was looking for a flag. Well, remember, it was Patrick Queen who had the coverage on the Najee touchdown in the end zone. Harris won that one. Patrick wins this one. Good coverage. Third down of a huge 19. All four track men are on the field. Wide receivers, four of them in the game. Three to the right, and Devontae Smith to the left. Tommy Lara steps up in the pocket, throws across the middle, and he's got it in the one, and it's Rooks. First down. And stepping up in the pocket allowed it to happen. Watch him move up. Plenty of room. Beautiful pocket and rugs. The same play he hit earlier. Rugs from the far wide side. It takes a while so that offensive line allowed Tua to step up and convert a huge first down. And a third and 19. They got 27. And now it's back to 22. Najee Harris to midfield. So we approach eight and a half. Alabama going a little bit of tempo here. They can only go as fast as that right ankle will carry it. <laughs> well, right now it's the left arm more than the right ankle. There's the left arm and traffic incomplete intended for Ruggs. And Cordell Flott, the freshman who took over in that secondary when Kerry Vincent went down to an injury. And Flott, an Alabama high school player, Signs with LSU and makes a play, at least on this one. Did he have his arms all over him? Might have. Might have. Got away with it. Third and one. <laughs> she does not agree. Tonga Valor again under center, which is a rarity. Najee Harris behind it. Fakes it to him. Once a long ball and come by Smith. With Stingley all over it. I thought Queen was going to dislodge right there. No, it was actually Stevens, number three, was going to knock Smith off his route. Stingley could not get there in the great hands. Brad told you how Judy said he's got the best hands. He showed it. In the 28, Najee Harris up the middle inside the 25. The wide receiver comparison we showed you on the season earlier today. Now we'll show you what's going on today. Still <laughs> yes, tracking pretty even, aren't they? Pretty even. And two has gone over 300 yards now as well. 311, 342 for LSU. But a performance by two. It started off slow, a little rusty. He's limping a little bit, but he's still in there. Well down. Seven and a half to play. Gonna have to hustle to get the playoff. Just did. Tonga the in trouble. Got away from the first guy. Throws too deep over the head of Ruggs. I'll tell you, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat right now. Both teams, both secondaries are playing man-to-man. -man. Two ahead to maneuver. Get away from Chase on. Good footwork. Throw just a bit high, though. Another third down. Our drama building for the fans. Third and six. Field goal means 
means nothing here. The tight end in motion. And it's Najee Harris on the ground. And he only got about a yard and a half. Yeah, that's because they were going to go for it on fourth down. Field goal would only make it a nine-point game. They're going for it. So now all important again, fourth down. They picked up the last one. Can the LSU defense finish this off? They had them third and 19. Fourth and four for the Tide. They need to get to the 18-yard line. Judy in motion. They're going to have to take a timeout. Boy, and it looked like the LSU defense was confused. Jacoby Stevens was pointing to everybody, stomping his foot. If Alabama could have snapped it, they'd have had an advantage. Here's what Gary's talking about. Yeah, watch Jacoby Stevens. He's talking to everybody. He just keeps doing it the whole time. He's turning around. He yells again. Can't get it. Both sides can't get the call. Right. Alabama takes a timeout. And Nick Zawada took it on the sideline. Coach Saban with a timeout call. Coach Ogeron, that away, guys. But it's still fourth and four. Plays don't get much bigger than this one. No. situation when you have a big play don't think plays think players and they went to their reliable player who schooled Stingley at the line of scrimmage he beat him in the first yard of the route Stingley's got no one to claim to on that one he had his eyes on him but the veteran Deontay Smith beat him at the line of scrimmage man down might be good. Jacoby Stevens, I think. We'll check on that when we come back. Not quite a full moon over Tuscaloosa. But what a football game. Jacoby Stevens was a guy shaking up on that last play on the tackle. Uh, Devontae Smith seemed to be holding his neck area. And uh, they're down a couple of safeties. They are. Looks like Cameron Lewis is going to have to come in for him, a substitute. Maybe a... You know, a fifth safety. Penn State lost today. The winner of this one, I don't care if Ohio State won by 100 points. I would think if <laughs> LSU beats Alabama, they're number one next week. Georgia play in Missouri tonight. And on this drive, the 11th play of it, Alabama's picked up third and 19 and fourth and four. And now, going to swing it out to Jalen Waddell inside the five. Well, they got the whole package right here. Steve Sarkeesian is bringing it all right now. Put the man in motion, stop him, and then go out. Quick throw. It's almost like a running play to the outside. Put your fastest player on the edge. Pylon Cam as he's coming right at you. Stevens back in the game, number three. They can actually get a first down with that score and second down and two. The first down marker is at the three. The ball's at the five. Time of the Wanted to go to Waddle. Now comes back the other way. The ball's tipped and incomplete. It's intended for Harris. Rashad Lawrence for the second time today. Swats one away. That was coverage. You said it. He wanted to go to the right side of the field. He wanted to go to the Waddle. But LSU bumps out. Ball is covered. Can't get it, and Najee Harris says I could have scored if that ball wasn't tipped. But it was. Being number 90. You know, you do wonder right there with a healthy tool, would he have just taken that ball and gone right up in the middle? I think that's a big, that's the first time in this game, I think, you know, 
the old tool would have gone right to the end zone. Third down and two. Andrew Harris switched sides of his quarterback. Play action slant. Drops. Judy had a hand on it. Cameron Lewis was there defensively. It's fourth down again. Just remember the significance. Every play takes more time off the clock because Alabama has to score twice. He's got it. Judy could have had it. And you're expecting your guy, that guy especially, to make this play. That's a big time drop. Yep. Well, as I said, they picked up a fourth and four. It's a fingernail biter, fourth and two. Remember, right could it be LSU, third time a charm, third and 19, fourth and four, now fourth and two. Will Alabama make them all? Talk about all. Pumps once, goes to the corner. Got it this time. Touchdown, Alabama. And he put the Belindikoff returning winner against the new man on the field, Cameron Lewis. The substituted safety against one of the best route runners we have in college football, and he catches this one. Bolivis in for the point after. Up and good. Jerry Judy had one slip through his fingers in the end zone, but not the next one. 75 yards in 14 plays. The capper for the five-yard touchdown, Tagovailoa to Jerry Judy. Five and a half to go. Alabama has had four possessions this half. The first possession was a punt. The last three have been touchdowns. And now they're within a score of the Tigers. Bullibus to kick off. And they'll kick it away. An immediately fair catch signal comes up from Edward Zelaire. The whole game, it's been the same thing. Don't you have the feel with the last three touchdowns by Alabama that Joe Burrow has experienced. It's going to have to do something like he did against Texas when he hit Justin Jefferson to ice the game. Can he do it again? Because it got the feeling here now if you give the ball back to Alabama, they're going to score again. And can you beat a fourth top ten team in a single season so far? They're five and a half minutes from it, but it's only a five-point game now. Edward E. Lair out of the backfield. Burrow's going to throw across the middle on the fly. He's got Jamar Chase. Chase all the way into Alabama territory in one play. How sneaky was that play? A fake quarterback draw by the quarterback, Joe Burrow. He sneaks up in the pocket like it's a quarterback draw. Watch this. And as he goes forward, he just says, uh oh, I'm going to throw. That is tricky. It sure is. And effective. 29 yard pickup right back into Alabama territory for the Tigers at the time 46. Five minutes to go. Always got to get this thing under five seconds when you snap the ball now. Here comes a blitz. Burrow steps away and got dropped at the 50. Didn't get away from Xavier McKinney. Well, what a game Xavier McKinney has having. Tackling in space, coverage, blitzing off the edge. He has been in the backfield all day. Free shot that time. A well-designed blitz by the Alabama defensive staff, and he gets a free shot at Joe Burrow. And it brings up second down at 14 back at the midfield strike. Five sacks today, five sacks a year ago in this game. Burrow fires across the middle, and it's caught. It's the middle of the field. If you have a pass offense that is willing to attack the middle of the field, there's going to be holes. A lot of colleges won't do it. 
come out, step to the outside. Justin Jefferson almost dropped that thing, but another first down. So it was a 29 yard pass to Chase, 17 more right there to Jefferson. And now they're camped inside the Alabama 35 for the first down. And down to three and a half minutes to go. Take your time, get it to five seconds. They do. Edward Delaire inside. Lewis made the tackle. He was coming with a pressure and dropped back and got a nice tackle on Edward Delaire. The weapon, it's not all your quarterback. When you've got one of those guys, Najee Harris or Edward Delaire, you can always run that ball. One more first down, and uh, Alabama's going to have to start using their two timeouts. That last home loss. Four years ago, 31 straight cents. In jeopardy, definitely. With under three to go. Again, as Gary said, under five on the play clock. Burrow, quick throw out to his tight end Moss. And Moss fights his way to the 25. Alabama with two timeouts remaining. Third down and two. Field goal makes it an eight-point game, but they don't want a field goal. And Burrow keeps it. Joe Burrow might be a Heisman moment right there if he hasn't produced enough of them. And this was a read all the way. The zone read, and he keeps it. You run, you run, you run, you see the crashing end, and he just keeps it. An 18-yard pickup. No hurry here if you're L if you're LSU. No hurry. First, First and goal at the seven. After this play, Alabama will use their timeout if they don't score, that is. LSU. Edward Zeller. They will score. Touchdown. right at the end, trying to go to rip the ball out. And that's why Edwards Alaire was able to break the tackle. Watch this, a straight arm, and then he goes for the rip out and not the tackle. What an answer, what a drive. What a he did it again, yes, he did it against Texas. And we questioned, would LSU finish? Yes, they have. Cade York's extra point is good. Now LSU has to understand the, the game. It's Alabama's got to go for a quick touchdown and an onside kick. It's the only way they can get in the game. Joe Burrow, that shows the fire, the leader. As Gary said, even the defense feeds off this dude. And remember the first play of the drive. That fake quarterback draw, nifty play. That was one of the coolest plays. And you get the feeling that Steve Emsinger saved it for the big drive and then give the ball to this guy. Edward Straight Dealer. Up. Yep. What a show he's put on. One of the shortest guys on the field, but one of the tallest right now. And that's a reaction from the Tides head coach. Joe Burrow feeling it right now. 97 seconds between a huge win. This is what this guy's all about. Absolutely. Even John Robinson, the old L.A. Rams <laughs> coach, can appreciate that, right? The gray-haired, older guy, that was who was hugging Joe yep. Burrow. He said, I've been in a long time. I know good, and you're good. Edward Zeller emotional on the sideline and as well he should be. He was what? always overlooked. He was never the big rec He wasn't Najee Harris. Right. His stature made him earn every snap, every rep, and in this big game, he has come through.
Henry Ruggs will take it at the one. They can't get any room for him, and he only comes out around the 14. Coming up after our game, Adam Rook and BJ will have scores and highlights of the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Well, here you go. 131 to go. Most in series history that dates back to 1895. This 84th edition has been a dandy. I remember when Russell Wilson went to Wisconsin. I said, why would you go to Wisconsin if you're a quarterback? <laughs> and then when Joe Burrow chose LSU, I go, really? Quarterbacks go there and die. <laughs> Not Joe Burrow. He changed it along with his head coach, and we'll get into that in a second. Meanwhile, to Tonga Valoa, going deep on his first throw to Smith. <laughs> It ain't over. I was just about to say, LSU just needs to keep everything in front of them. So what do they do? Bump and run to the outside? I don't quite understand. All you have to do is keep the receiver in front of you, let them have 10, 12 yards, and you go bump and run and allow that guy to throw to his favorite receiver. Remember, second and 26, same guy. A little longer this time. Extra point is good. This is something else. Alabama has scored the last four times, touchdowns the last four possessions. That one took 16 seconds. I just questioned the defensive call by Dave Aranda there. Come on. You got a young player to the outside. You've got to protect him. You got to drop eight people and force Alabama to at least take five plays down the field. Four hundred eighteen yards passing for Tua Tagovailoa and four touchdowns. And this is not. Your game of the century from eight years ago, is it? Here we go. They're not kicking this one deep, I'll tell you that. Bullivis has it teed up as he'll kick it sideways to the right and the top of the screen. Takes a pretty good hop, but it's handled by Justin Jefferson. Nice catch, right? One of his best of the day. Yes, it was. Beautiful. Execution of the onside kick. If Alabama gets a three and out and stops them, using their timeouts, there will be roughly 25, 20 seconds left in the game. Justin Jefferson. And the last drive only took 15, 16 seconds. Right. Let's check the quarterback stat, should we? How about this? 392 and 3, 418 and 4. 59 yards on the ground is a big thing for Joe Burrow, especially on that last drive. Edward E. Lair dragging Alabama tacklers with him. First down. That's the game. They can take a knee now. How good has this guy been today? Everybody's still trying to rip the ball loose and not tackle the runner. McKinney is trying to rip it loose. Maiden's trying to rip it loose. First down, game. Now Alabama showed some grit here, and I gotta tell you, they're gonna be in the discussion still. Their schedule's soft. I get it, okay? But this team, with can play with anybody, can score on anybody. This is an interesting situation It's going to end up this year, right? So now the discussion is going yeah. to be kind of one loss SEC team that doesn't make the yes. SEC championship. Again. 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 Make it to the college You're football playoff. Have potentially Oregon winning a championship, Oklahoma winning a championship in it. 
In a loss today for Alabama, there's some of the things that Jerry Palmar, analyst at CBS Sports, predicts would have to happen. I do know this. Whenever Ohio State or Alabama's in the discussion at the end, it's interesting. <laughs> Those two schools produce a lot of talk. We knew that number two LSU which was considered number one by one of the polls. Alabama was number one in another poll. And the College Football Selection Committee College Football Ranking Poll at Ohio State number one. So we came into the day with a difference of opinion in the eyes of many as to who was number one in the country. I don't know how you don't say with LSU's resume with a fourth win over oh, yeah. a top ten team that they're not the best around. Absolutely. The committee will reward them coming here to win this game on this field. And I said for Ed Orgeron, his vision was, and he knew that he had to go with this program through Alabama. And a new era of LSU football didn't start until they beat Alabama. He said, we're coming. They came in today and he, got the job done. He measured everything against Alabama. He knew he, there was no way to sneak around them. They had to go through them. He told his team, as we said earlier, I told them all week. We're the better team. Today, they were. <laughs> biggest win for Ed Ogeron. The biggest win for Joe Burrow. What a courageous game for Tua as well, right? Yep. I mean, what a lot of great competition on this field. He does not have to hang his head as he limps toward the locker room after another four touchdown performance. Nothing but respect for yep. that man. He played his heart out. And today that guy and his team was just a little bit better. The winning coach is with Jamie. Coach, it took eight years, and you knew this yes. one was going to take 60 minutes. We know what it was like to watch, but what was this one like to coach? You know what? It's a great game to be in, a great robbery. I am so happy for the state of Louisiana and all the LSU fans and our football team and our coaching staff. They worked very hard for this victory. It's a must-deserved victory for our football team and our great state of Louisiana and our great university in LSU. Joe Burrow has changed the way this team runs its offense. What does this do for his legacy as an LSU quarterback? Hey, you know, he's one of the best we've had here. But we still got four games left. And we're going down the road. We're going to try to win them every every game. And we're going to bring a championship back to Louisiana. Clyde Edwards E. Lair carried that Alabama group just now for the first down. How did that embody the toughness today? You know, Clyde is 6'4", 270. <laughs> and uh, he has a great mindset about himself. He has the heart of a champion. I am so proud of Clyde. Where can this team go from here, Coach? We'll see. We've got to go beat Ole Miss next week. We'll take it one game at a time. Congratulations. Go Tigers. Clyde Edwards E. Lair is right here. I'll grab him. Coach just said you're 6'4", 270. Is that how big your heart is in a game like today? Uh, I feel like my heart can't be measured. Uh, you know, growing yeah! up. <laughs> I love that guy. No, so you can hang here too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. I mean, I feel like I feel like my heart can't be measured. Uh, you know, always a lot of doubt as far as us as a team, us as a state, and, you know, me personally, myself, I've always been talked down on height and everything else. So. You know, being able to, to help my boys out, get a team for my for my get a win for my team and my, and my state, man, it's it's something unbelievable. Baton Rouge kid, congratulations! Thank you so much, Joe. I'll talk with you. Is this why you come and play in the SEC? This is why this is why I decided to transfer. This is why I decided to come down here and play with this guy and, and all those guys over there. You know, these are, these are the games you live for and you work so hard for. You hit a lot of speed bumps along the way, not just at LSU. When you envisioned your life and your football career turning out this way, is this what you dreamed of? You know, I thought I thought I would be on this stage. I didn't think I would be in this jersey, though. And it's been it's been a bumpy road. It's been a long one, but I'm, I couldn't be in a better place. They call a draw play for you at the end. There, you get the first down. You stand up. Was that your Heisman moment? <laughs> I don't know about all that. No, we're not we're not done yet. It's game game nine. We got we got three more regular season than the SEC championship. So. You know, this was never our goal. You know, we, we got bigger goals than this. How good does this feel you too? Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. I can't <laughs> wait to get back home. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Great job, Jamie. Both of those guys tell a great story. 
Don't let anybody else define you. Yep. Joe had to transfer. Edward Dallaire started out. Nobody believed him. You determine who you are. In that interview with Coach Ogeron, you could tell by the catch in that raspy voice and the tear in his yeah, eye. He was so this emotional. means a lot. And the two guys with the bad ankles coming in both played their hearts out today. And as Gary said, nothing but respect. So, the West, it's not won yet, but LSU takes a giant step in that direction at 5-0 and and 9-0 and overall. And Alabama loses for the first time in 32 games at home. And that's time for the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. As Jamie asked, was it your Heisman moment? Joe said, I don't know about all of that. But that 18-yard run certainly set it up. This is how Chris Blair called it for the LSU Radio Network. Burrow lines him up. Here's a quick snap. Burrow keeping off the left edge with Rue inside the 20. 15, 10, slugged down at the 6-yard line of the Alabama Crimson Tide. And that got it close enough for Edward Zelaer to do the rest. And the final touchdown. And what a special game it was. We called it coming in the game of the year. Did they live up to the billing? I think so. That's going to wrap it up from Tuscaloosa. LSU wins 46 to 41. It's been fun. Thanks for being with us. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl, Brad Nessler playing so long from Tuscaloosa. Final score, Tigers 46, tied 41. College football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage is up next after these messages. A classic in Tuscaloosa. Good night.